What's up? Woo! Good people in YouTube land. It's your boy, the Bad Wolf. Hey, what's going on? We got 60 people, 80 people already jumping in in their like swimwear. What's going on, guys? What's going on? Man, this has been a wild, wild west year already. We got train derailments. We got UFO balloons. <laughs> we got $8 eggs. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. I, I, wow. All right. All right. All right. All I can say is um, we're about to make it hot. So this is going to be the full step-by-step -step comprehensive guide to getting the state citizen, a.k.a. national of the United States of America, passport. We are going to cover everything. I'm going to apologize ahead of time. You guys have been saying you might want a three or four hour one. This, this one might be long. We're going to see. All right. Uh, Mike says we got chlorine coming out of the top, but that ain't nothing new. In the Midwest, we had cryptosporidium. <laughs> I don't even think they got uh, Flint, Michigan fixed yet. They still doing it. All right, all right. Let's see. Let's get some shout outs. What's going on, Michelle? We got Pete Perez in the house. Let's go. Private is here. Lo loving it. Keep it that way. Private. All right. I am Batman. What's going on? <laughs> I am Batman. <laughs> we got Fred, Deshaun. Uh, we got King. Rick Smith. Lee. We got Nestor, Jim, Eric, Lance is a new member. That's what I'm talking about right there. Yes, sir. We got Terry Drake, the young Drakester, Eric Keys. We got the goddess, Covidius. All right, all right. Forex, Peaceful Inhabitants, and we got Venus. All right, we got, uh, I'm going to catch up down here. Got Dom Duval, yes, yes. Got the boss. <laughs> Michael says, I'm, barely, I'm not the only one off the rails. You got to be off the rails to uh, understand this stuff, right? Oh, we got. A6 grind time. It's grind time, y'all. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's my little cousin in the house doing his thing. All right. It's the born natural foreign national. Woo. All right. All right. It's going to be a hot one today. We're almost at 200 already. Y'all was not playing. Y'all was ready for this. Y'all was not playing. I know I apologize for making y'all wait. I had to had to try to make sure we we tested all this and uh you know make sure we got almost all the bugs out as met as many as possible. And um I'm switch back over. All right, we got Rotten Apple News, Delphic General, Marvin. Ha, Batman, I see you again. <laughs> the really successful Leon, 
Chess, Brooks, Char, Vivian, James, Brian Faulkner, Clyde Horn, Floyd, Isaiah, Mary, Reggie, <laughs> Turd Polishers, <laughs> Tommy, uh, Headhunter, Brian. All right. Woo, you guys are killing it. I can't even keep up today. It might be a whole show of me just yelling out names. Frog Dog, what's going on? Marvin, Antoine Jackson, D. Hud, Bill State National, Sugar, Rasta Hotep. All right. That being said, I'm caught up and I apologize in advance if I don't get to call it your name. Um, I just got, we got so much to cover. I'll try to get some in later. Let's get going. All right. So now with the passport process. All right, the way we normally want to start this off is, first of all, this is not for U.S. citizens, okay? You guys do it, whatever you guys do your way, we're going to do it our ways. All right, I see bells ringing. What's going on? I see the name Enoch. I had to jump on that one, you know, so what's going on with it? Um, so this is for education, entertainment purposes from your favorite belligerent, <laughs> definitely a combatant. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Non-belligerent, non-combatant, man in black, the werewolf himself. All right. So as always, you guys know you guys can get the merchandise on Black Site 32. Thank you guys for supporting. Um, there's the white hoodie over there. All right. Why I got white, I don't know. You got to keep that bad boy, you know, just so clean, but yet so grimy and yet so shiny. Uh, but you can get them in all different colors, all the stuff you see me wearing, whatever else um, you guys can get. So uh, without further ado, let's get going. So once again, this is for the state citizen. Now, let's see here. Let me look at my notes because I got lots and lots of stuff going on. All right. So the state citizen, remember, is not the same as a U.S. citizen. Now, they will have you believe they are the same. They are not. But what it is, is under the classification of U.S. citizen, you can be a national, but they are not the same thing. OK, we are all born indigenous to where we the republic of whichever state we were born in. That's a state citizen. You become a national because all the states are together. That makes you a national. Now, unless you were born in Washington, D.C., then, yes, you were born a 14th Amendment U.S. citizen first and then acquired your national side, okay? Here in my America, we're born as state citizens first, and then we acquire the 14th Amendment U.S. citizen by use of the birth certificate issued by the state. Now, the one from the hospital is the private one. So originally, if you can find your baby feet print birth or record of birth, that is the master document. They do not want you to have that one because it has all the power. That's why they keep it and they try to charge you for it so that you don't go after it. Get it. Spread the word. Spill the beans. Let's go. If you guys are having kids, having some children's, get the baby feet one, period. The next one is the certificate of live birth. It's the next best one, but it's a certificate of. Anytime you see the word something, something of, that means you're not getting the de jour one. You're getting de facto, non-real, the fictitious, the second best. You didn't get the girl you want. You got her uh, sister that nobody likes or her brother, however you get down. So you're, you're not getting the real one. That's why I have a certificate of title. The state takes the title. They destroy it. They issue you a certificate of so they can claim ownership. If anybody knows how to purchase a vehicle completely private, let me know. I want to know. We'll make a video on it. Something where we bypass the state getting it. The only way I know is if you um, buy it outright cash. All right. But well, we can talk about that in another um, uh, video. Okay, what do we got here? My daughter has no birth certificate, but we got the footprint document. Fire, protect that one. If you're going to use that one for the process, um, then I would suggest sending it uh, protected and insurance and, you know, everything across the board because you do not want them to lose that one. <laughs> hey, 
just because a girl's got a little extra love and don't mean she, uh, you know, uh, you know, don't don't deserve no love. So come on now. I'm in the Midwest. Ninety eight percent of the girls here are, are big boned. All right. F-A-B-O-S. F them all, big or small. Everybody needs love. All right. That's how we get down. Everybody needs love. All right. So if you can get the master, it looks like Frog Dog said, I was charged $170 for the master from Florida. Yes, it is. I know they're taxing, but that's, think about it. Why are the most important books in the world expensive? Why is the baby fee print one expensive? Because they don't want you to make money off of it. All right. <laughs> yeah, uh, King. Yeah, we 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 call that Fabos, F-A-B-O-U-S. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> F A B O S. <laughs> all right. So yeah, everybody, in all honesty, yeah, everybody needs love for real though. Uh, you know, don't take anything personal here. If you do this, you don't, you might not want to, you might want to stop watching because this is not, I'm not, I'm not uh PG rated here. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna make y'all laugh. I'll make y'all question some things. All right. So, okay. So if you got the certificate of live birth or the master one, you do not need to authenticate it. Okay. It can be, but most of the time it's not because the, the county level has already authenticated those documents. If it's the birth certificate from the state issued, when you send off your certificate of live birth and you got it back, that's the state issued one. They keep that one. They will almost never let you have that one or know about it. Vital statistics will keep that bad boy to always have the, the money generator on, on deck. OK, so the birth certificate is in the federal jurisdiction, which is known as Hague, H-A-G-U-E, Hague Convention. The Department of State has a list of Hague countries. You're going to want to have a non-Hague. Now, I know off the top of my head, non-Hague is uh, Egypt. OK, I love Egypt. All right. So Egypt is the one that you want to use on the state level for authenticating. Ask them specifically, do you authenticate for non-Hague countries? Places like California and New York do not authenticate on the state level. There's a couple other states that don't either. So make sure you know what you're doing. On the federal level, you remember, you only need one level and you just you need it in a non-Hague. They will sometimes double authenticate. It does not have to be done. If you have the time and the money, go for it. But they may reject that. OK, they did it for me. They're like, nope, your state already does it. We're not going to do it on the federal level, too. So why is it they do it for other people or some people? Yeah. So anyway, one level, either or whichever one you can get done, use a non-Hague country. If you're on the federal uh, level of jurisdiction, you just merely type in same thing with the state. Um, how do I authenticate my birth certificate on the state level or how do I authenticate my birth certificate on the federal level? On the federal level, it's a DS-4194 form, okay? Federal will usually take about a month, maybe two, unless you expedite it. State will take about a week, maybe two, and you can expedite it, okay? I also have heard people going right to the Secretary of State's office. I would call first or right to the Department of State's office and getting it done instantaneously. And yes, you can do. I'm going to I'm going to try to field a question or two if I see it, but I'm, I got lots of information. So you guys can talk amongst yourselves in the comment section. And if you guys want to like, hey, does anybody know about this? Go ahead. Um, I will try to get over there a little bit, but we've got lots of info. And uh, <clears throat> I got to drink some filtered water out of my copper cup for health benefits. Because I got a lot of information to cover. A lot. This is going to be the comprehensive guide. Now, remember, there are four, three or four processing centers. Okay. This means that you can literally go right to one of these processing centers. I think one's in like Chicago, Philadelphia, somewhere out west, and one's down near Georgia or Texas. If you go there with everything we're about to talk about already done. You can get your passport book done in 45 minutes. Call first and make sure everything is cool, but 45 minutes. 
The passport card will come to your house in a week, maybe a week and a half. In general, when you do the passport process, it will take eight to 11 weeks, depending on which area you're in, unless you expedite it. Ah, Space says you look great in your cap. Thank you. I usually don't wear caps, but my uh, my crazy, sexy, beautiful girlfriend uh, liked me uh, when I would put on one of my friends, which I haven't worn in years. So I was like, ah, yeah, right, I'll rock it a little some some. Even though I know she don't really watch my lives, she'd be like doing her own thing, you know, which is cool. She's like, that's your stuff. I don't want, you know, be involved in it. I'll just let you do it. So it's all good. Okay. So you can contact the vital statistics department in your state and get a certified copy. Some places like Pennsylvania, they don't want you to have the master one. Okay. So they're only going to give you a cert certified one from the Commonwealth. They do things a little differently out there. So when requesting a copy, now, well, I'll get to that. Uh, remember to ask them for the long form version or the legal version or the um, where it says uh, other put in for legal reasons. I need birth, weight, date, time, signatures, all information available. This is how you get the master version, at least a copy of that one. Mother's name, everything. If the hospital is still in existence, contact them and ask them for the full medical history on you being born. Remember, entities are birthed. The birth certificate is for the entity who happens to have a different birthday than your born on day. I'm going to drop a lot of knowledge here, guys. Pay attention to the words. I'm going to give you guys tools. I'm not going to tell you how to use all of them, but a lot. All right. So, that takes care of that part. Okay, now we're going to look at, remember, the birth certificate, because of the QCIP number on there, is a security. Okay, that's why we made the video, how much are you worth? Now, once again, we're not going to go into bonds and everything. I already made some videos on education, on what we believe, where they're located and how to look at things. But I'm also going to make another video with the GMEI utility. Okay. We, got, we did a video on that. We're going to do another one on it um, to cover that. So we do know that every almost everything that they issue to us, if there's a red number on there, it is a QCIP number. It has a value. That means that document in X amount of time will mature and have a monetary value. Now, this does not mean you can just go and pull it, yoink, because they keep that information secret. They literally say, well, that's that's for internal stuff. So... Yeah, the yeah the GMEI utility they changed it to DTCC, um, something like that. So yeah, we'll get to all that stuff too. All right. So once again, this is for the state citizen, and let's take a look at what we have going on here. Now remember, okay, I'm about to share the screen. Okay. Uh, present share screen. Which one is that? Yes. All right. So, right here, I'm gonna get out of the way. Whoop. What does it say in the in the in the first bullet point? Yep. If you're reading it, then you're with me. The Secretary of State may issue a U.S. passport only to U.S. citizens and nationals. We fall under nationals. Nationals is the new term, not brand new, but the new term for the state citizen. This is how, from our perspective, they hide the republic-born living entity because we are nationals the national and the state citizen are synonymous though state citizen means you're born and loyal to just your state national means you're loyal to all of the states the u.s citizen is the 14th amendment entity 
But under that title of U.S. citizen, you can be multiple things in there. And that's fine if that's what you want to be. They also now go by citizens of the United States, which encompasses all of the five different types of citizens and nationals you can be here in the United States of America. Okay? So I wanted to show you that because, hi, Department of State, um, they forgot to update that page. That's what used to be on the old passports. You should say U.S. citizen or state citizen. Now what do we have? U.S. citizen or non-citizen national. Well, let's break apart the term non-citizen national. Non-citizen means you're not a citizen. And what's left in the terminology? National. Boom. There it is. All right. Um, so I see some people talking about the passport stars. Okay. Let's cover that real quick too. When we first started the channel, we did not know what they are. And I'm here to tell you 100%. We still don't know what they are. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Because the, uh, those are considered a security thing, okay? Now, by our trial and error, reading hundreds of websites, and not just websites, people from, okay, let me break it down to you. So here's how I deduce the information. I'm reading people saying, I just came here. I just got my green card. I just got this and that. And I got my passport. I have one star here in this specific area. I'm married to somebody. I just came here. They have two stars. I'm a U.S. citizen, and I just applied regularly, and I got three. I'm in the military, and I got four. I'm a ranking official, and I got five. So after reading hundreds of those and meticulously putting down all these people who didn't know I was doing a study, they're just telling their truth, we were able to deduce that if you have three stars or more, it is our belief that you are on the do not detain list, educational information only. But the three is what we consider to be red zone, meaning you are still a U.S. citizen and you are a state citizen or national. You have not proven to them that you are non-threatening, non-belligerent enough to be a four or five. Now, do we know that it's fact? No. But we will say that it is a strong belief due to the information, logical deduction. If somebody in the military has one and they're a four, okay, and a five, it's because they're trusted. So the more stars you have, uh, somebody says, well, the higher the security risk you are. That's not, that's not exactly it. You are put on the, on the uh, list on what's known as the watch list. And it's also called the do not detain. But you being on the do not detain could also be somebody who's a master villain. We have already seen that people with four and five are let go. All right. Now, that doesn't mean that you can you're not above the law. It means that you are operating privately and that the higher level of stars you get, like they don't issue you. They don't give. People from other countries who just came here one star, they are definitely considered to be a U.S. citizen or a potential threat or enemy of the state. That's why they have five star generals. OK, the higher the stars has always been in the United States and in America, the higher the stars has always been the better. OK, now we understand that the higher it is. And I got this information from a um, person who is a five star. I won't tell you where they're a part of. But let's just say that they're in the private and they've got more information than you guys can possibly imagine. They were willing to share it with me and I have already vetted their information. Matter of fact, this person shared with me a 128 page explanatory statement. OK, so and Rotten Apple will throw up what they said here. He got four stars after he got out of prison. Prison doesn't mean anything. But why? Because he had the Twit card. It means they trust you. Bam. Thank you, Rotten Apple. Doesn't matter that you were in prison. It matters that they trust you. You have a military clearance. You are looked like you are looked at as a diplomat. So now remember, 
now that they've changed the the card, I believe, and the book, I'm just now applying by what we're going to talk about here um, to see. No, the, the three the three stars fine. Don't get hung up on the stars. As long as you have three or more, you are good. Don't work. Don't trip. In the future, you can reapply. Okay. And if you get the higher one, great. Here's the here's the thing to keep in mind. Just by having the passport sets you up for having an identification under a different system than your state level. Okay. So that also helps to separate you from your state side of things and the federal side of things. Okay. So the old book and the old card used to have the stars on them. I hear that now that as a security measure, you can still find the stars on the edge of the book, but you have to have a black light. And they, they talk about this right online. So it's not like I'm sharing anything super secret. It's just less known to most of you guys because I read these things. But so uh, what did Honey Badger say here? The TSA did not react to my passport card, have not been able to use it anywhere else yet. The passport card can only be used for local stuff. It cannot be used for going over the big pond, not internationally. Okay, only national. Um, and they're not going to react to it. They're going to look at it. And most of the time, they're just going to go, okay, cool, and keep going. Every once in a while, they might say, oh, okay, might give you VIP or might, you know, whatever else. But it's not, you know, it's it's getting the card and getting the status done the correct way. That's the biggest thing. So don't get hung up on the stars. Um, the Twit card is basically a um, uh, it's a it's a what is it like a governmental status for doing something where your your background everything is looked at and if they approve you you're given a a level of clearance. So you're looked at as not being a civilian. Okay. Um, yeah, if you have the Carter book and the cop runs it and it's and it's active and you have not committed a crime, they usually will let you go. But remember, if you are driving, which is different than traveling, you are mixing jurisdictions, and now you're making them have to decide if they should give you a ticket. Most of them are willing to risk it, okay, because you still have their plates and stuff on and you're putting them in a bad scenario. I call it my my poop cake theory. Poop cake. Poop. Poop, 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 poop. Why? Because if you take a piece of poop, which is the U.S. citizenship in this case, and you put it into a cake, is the cake good? No. But that's your driver's license. That's your state. That's your your ID, your driver's license, your license plate, your registration. You've tainted the whole cake into being a U.S. citizen, even if it's a small spot. So you have to follow the whole entire right to travel information. If you're going to travel, most of the cops during the day, they know what this is. They've been sued. They don't want no part of it. At night, your young your young Billy Bad Butts um, tend to want to make a name for themselves. They don't know what it is. They don't share this information internally. I've challenged many cops and told them, go to your commanding officer, ask him to speak in private and ask him about right to travel or operating as a private citizen in their private vehicle. Then I don't hear from them anymore. Well, most of them, some of them still go, yeah, you, you were right, bro. And then they leave me alone. Okay. So, okay. Now where do we leave off? Gotten too many tangents. All right. So price. One of the first things you need to do is determine what you're, you you want to get. The passport book is like 30 bucks. And I think the uh no, the card is like 30 bucks. The book is um 160. Okay? And obviously if you get expedite, it's going to be a little bit more. The post office usually is the one who does it, and they charge, I think, like 14 or 15 bucks for photos, but you only need one. I highly recommend you go to Walgreens. Walgreens, you can get it for like four or five bucks, save yourself some time. 
They got a whole thing set up for it. Yeah, Expedite is like, yeah, 60 or 80 bucks. Okay, uh, thanks, Mike. Now, I've never done it at the federal building, but I heard you can do it there. I heard you can do it at um, a library or, or a federal building. So, yeah, definitely, you know, if you want to save a couple of bucks, that's how you do it. Most of them, you have to call ahead of time and set up an appointment. So call and phone first. Make sure that they're accepting. Okay. Most of them do not take cash. Ask them how much um, FedEx does for 200. Okay. Ask them how much it costs for not only the appointment with them. Have the money. You got to have the Department of State's check for whatever you, one or two you're going to get. That can be combined. Wherever else you're going, the federal building or the post office has to be, you have to have a separate check or money order for them. Some places do not take cash nor credit. So make sure you find out which ones they accept before going. Now, as far as your identification pieces, okay? Let's see here. Okay, I'm going to share a screen. All right. All right, all right, all right. Okay, let me get over here. I'm trying to, got so many icon oh, screens popped up. All right. So now people are asking. Okay, so you have to use your first and last and middle name. Okay, date of birth, gender, the social security part right in here. It says if you do not want to use your social security card number on the DS-11, if you don't want to use it, let's get it backwards. You must create an affidavit that says you personally, now pay attention to the words, you personally never applied for a social security number. Educational information only. Did you? I know I didn't. My parents got that. And then one day they just said, here, use this. So on the affidavit, you're going to put in there, I can honestly say I have not, I did not purchase, I did not obtain, I did not apply for a, 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 a social security card. Get that done with the stamp by the notary. Now you don't have to use the social. We've gotten four and five uh, star passports with the social. So it's not the end of the world. I think it's better to not use it, but you might get some pushback. So totally up to you. Educational information only, but that's how you do it. Right here it says, I declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the United States of America. I like how they have America in there. But the following is true. I have never been issued a social security number by the Social Security Administration. This is a fact for 99% of everybody out there because you were not issued one. Your parents were issued one and they used your name. That is legal talk because that is the facts. You are the holder of it, but you did not request one. Okay. Awesome. Let's keep going. Email, your phone number are all optional. Okay, they're going to talk about the mailing address. We're going to get to that in a minute. List of other names used. We're going to get to all that. Your proof of citizenship. A U.S. birth certificate. With all your information, they also take a certificate of live birth. They also take the master one. They will return this, so do not trip out. Do not freak out. As long as it doesn't get lost in the mail, they will return it. They will also take a hospital record. So you can get the transcripts of your birth, and they can use that. Baptismal or circumcision certificates. Early school census, medical, billing, family Bible records, insurance files. 
birth announcements, newspaper, and a notarized DS-10 or birth affidavit. Here's where you can make your own. Get it signed under Jurat. Have an older blood relative or a longtime friend or personal witness vouch for it. One or two would be good. We've already done all of this and it, we have been successful. ID. Okay. It says proof of identity. Present your original identification. And submit a front and back copy of this form. So any of these will work. But what also is your original identification? An affidavit of who you are. You can literally have people vouch for who you are under Jurat, take it to the notary, get it notarized. They'll need to look at your passport or some other ID to validate that it's you. And you can use that. That is original identification. These are all actually secondary. Nobody starts off with the driver's license. <laughs> All right. So the uh, color photograph of yourself to these requirements. All right. And everything else is pretty much self-explanatory. I'm not going to go through all this little detail. You don't really need that. Do not make false statements. Not knowingly and not willfully. Acts and conditions section has been changed. This used to be a thing where it would say, line it out. Okay. That being said, phew. that being said, you're going to find between that section and the bottom where it talks about the explanatory statement. You do not have, it is not required nor mandatory for you to have an explanatory statement. If you decide to make your own, don't call it an affidavit. You're going to put on their explanatory statement because it is your statement and you're explaining why you believe you are a state citizen singled out versus a U.S. citizen. Okay. Uh, my boy Batman says, everybody back out, hit that smash button and smash that like button. All right. Don't make me, uh, don't make me pause the whole video until I see. We got 400 watching, so thank you guys for that. And we got 250 thumbs up. Y'all slacking. Slacking. Let's get those likes up. If y'all like what I'm doing here, let's go. Let's go. It helps the algorithm. Let's YouTube know that I am doing something that everybody believes in and that they find valuable, and they will spread it to other people like yourselves. Let's make some new friends. Bring them into the, uh, into the fold. Okay. All right. So the explanatory statement can be one paragraph or it could be 127. I've seen them all. Okay. Mine is uh, eight pages with an additional 12 available on blacksite32.com. It has a ton of information on why you are a state citizen versus a U.S. citizen. We've already broken this down. And we've put it all in there. You can also use the explanatory statement in your right to travel binder. You can use it for your affidavits of who and what your status is. Okay. Oh, and uh, speaking of the black light, using to find the stars, they're on the edge of the uh, pages. Jay says, you got my light. Well, appreciate you, Jay. That's what I'm talking. That's what I'm talking about right there. And that's on the book. The card has reflective black light things too. Now, could there be some things on there you can't even see with a black light? Sure. Are they encoding the statuses instead of putting, you know, you know, some things on the card? Sure. You know, nothing we can possibly find on the internet is, is going to be their top secret stuff. All right. It's very little known stuff, but they're never going to have a website where they have their best stuff listed out there. That would be not not be wise. I would slap the taste out of people's mouths for doing that myself. Okay. 
prosper, protect my country, protect my America. All right. So getting back to, let's go back to the page here. Back to present, share screen. Bang. All right. Now, the old acts and conditions section had a spot where you lined out. Okay. So right now it says, if any of the below acts or conditions have been performed or or by or applied to the applicant, a supplementary explanatory statement under oath, which is why you get it notarized, by the applicant should be attached to this application. Okay. Also, if we zoom down here real quick, in the oath part, I declare under penalty of perjury all the following information. I am a U. I am a. Oh, they changed it. Now you say U.S. citizen. Now it says I am a citizen. Okay, I am a citizen. Ah, you know why? Because they're getting rid of every. They're getting rid of the fact that everybody knows what a U.S. citizen is. Now the term citizen of the United States, which encompasses all of the statuses. Clever. Well done, department. Well done. I like that. I am a citizen or a non-citizen national. Well, we know non-citizen cancels, which means just a national. So we are a national of the United States. You're singling yourself out if you say you're a non-citizen national. If you're saying you're all of those things, then you fall under citizen of the United States and not perform any of the following acts listed in the acts and conditions section on page four of the instructions application, knowingly, unless an explanatory statement is attached. So if you want to clarify who you are, you add an explanatory statement. It doesn't mean just if you've done those things. They want to know what is your understanding of what's going on. Okay. And talking about the fees. If you're inside the United States, you can do this at embassies. Do not do false statements. All right. Now, before we get started here, we're going to take a little mini break. Phew. Answer a couple of questions. Look at a couple of things. Drink some water. Filtered, of course. Everybody should have a filter on your shower. Your well, if you can get the whole house, that'd be great. If you can't, just get your sink for drinking out of your refrigerator and your shower. Okay. So, um, thank you, Vic. Um, I just seen it passed up there. Let's see. And here we, if I can post it, can I show it? Oh, they won't let me go back. All right. Thank you, Vic. Come here. Back up, back up, back up. All right. So, we've begun the first phase of the passport process. Oh, man. Woo. All right. Now, for those playing the home game, before we get to the coup de gras, while everybody's here, the last part of the passport process that is publicly available for information, that's going to be at the last part of the video. Yeah, I'm going to make you guys wait. <laughs> Dirty. All right. But don't worry. It's worth it. All right. We're going to cover. We cover all the basic stuff in the front. We're gonna hit the next sections. And uh, like I said, it's not going to be, well, put it this way. You're not going to have to wait four hours to get it, all right? It'll, it'll probably happen within the next hour, maybe hour and a half. And then if we go to three or four hours, that'll be just us talking about questions and whatever else. So I won't make you wait the whole thing, all right? So let's see here. You guys are talking amongst yourselves in there. Awesome, awesome. Sugar Main said, "All right, Sugar, Sugar G Man. All right, so one, breathe, bro, breathe. I've done this process for a lady uh, was eighty-eight years old, and yes, this stuff can make you a little crazy, you know. So, you know, if you need nothing personal." Or maybe personal. If you need some help, definitely go and get somebody to help. You know, if you need to talk to somebody about it. But you have to understand that this is a, we don't know how to do commerce. 
They never gave us a book on how to do commerce. They just expected us to use it. And then they penalize us because then they can make money off of where we screw up. Nobody's an idiot in this. We were never taught this. I've been doing this since I was nine years old. And I still don't know all of it. And I'm better than half of them out there. All right. So this is going to be the comprehensive guide for the passport. Watch this video and you will have that. But what I want everybody to know, okay, is that you are a state citizen first. You are a national first. That makes you free knowing what you are. That is your private side. And really, you should be using your given name for your private side. Operating under the Constitution for the United States of America. They started us off with a public side. And to be in that public side, they had to give us a legal name. We the living can't do commerce in their world as we are with a given name. We have to use a legal name to do legal things. Our name in all capitalized letters in Black Law's Dictionary under Capitus Demutia maxim, Maxima means a full loss or major reduction in freedoms and rights or standing, even status, if you will, by use of the all caps name. This is their law dictionary. Okay. The, the average person doesn't have the time to sit down and study all of this. I've been doing it my entire life because I've always thought it was fascinating. But I also speak four other languages. I do it for fun when I get bored. I'm, st I'm still learning Latin right now. Nobody uses Latin. Tempest Fugit. You know, time flies. Novus Ordo Seclorum. New World Order. Okay? Nobody learns this stuff. I do it because I love reading. <laughs> and I'm a nerd. <laughs> Revenge of the Nerds. Nerds! Love that movie. Such a such a pervert, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. Um, you know, movies they can never make today. Um, and black law, black laws is the law of the dead. Yep. Or those operating in the black. Okay. But black doesn't mean negative. Black means the beginning point, the ethereal. The creator of the universe created the light and the planets and the celestial heavenly bodies off of a black chalkboard. It means there's power there. That's why they wrap themselves in black. That's why they want to steal power from black. All right. There's power there. You, you create from the black void. Okay. The legal name was pulled out of the void of blackness. A vessel, a body was created. All right. So let's get back into the videos. YouTube killed the radio star. All right. Now, let's um hold on, let me see here. Okay. So, share screen. All right. If you're watching the same screen I'm watching, you're now looking at the Department of State. Hello Department of State. Thank you for doing a wonderful job at what you guys do. America. Okay? So, you can go to Black Site 32 and get the written description of almost everything we're talking about here on how to do the passport process. It's now there's now a page on blacksite32.com forward slash passports or passport, one of the two. All right. Otherwise, the Department of State is where you get all of your information. I'm an adult. You're going to click here. I already have a passport. You're going to use a DS-82. OK, now, if you. Uh, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. OK, so if you need a brand new one, you want a form, you can download one here. You can find out the cost of the passport right here. Calculate my fees, how to submit a photo, rush the passport. OK, special passport acceptance fares, all this stuff, processing times. Eight to 11 weeks ish. Five to seven if you spend sixty dollars when you expedite. Processing times may vary depending on the on the uh, when you which place received it and how backed up they are. 
urgent travel, make an appointment and have international travel in the next 14 days. Better have your travel plans ready. Okay. So they have all of that right here. All right. I've got links to that site, that page on Black Site 32 as well on the passport page. Okay. We also have written depictions on how to fill out the passport, which is what we're going to talk about here today. I guess I probably should have used Zoom. I could have gone to the white screen. I don't think I can do it on StreamYard. Uh, well, whatever. We'll figure it out. Okay. All right. So now we're going to start. We're going to talk about how to fill out the actual passport. Okay. So let me share screen. Boom. Now, depending on what you want, the book, the card, both, you don't need the large book unless you're doing a lot of traveling. Okay, get the regular book, pass, U.S. passport book, passport card. You're good. Book and card. Remember, the passport card cannot be used for international air travel. Okay. Now, this page is our understanding, due to all these little boxes representing the prisons that they put us in, this is for the legal entity. Your all caps name. So you're going to put in your last name just the way it is on your birth certificate. Your first name, your middle name. Now understand this. If you are doing a DS-60, now what is a DS-60? A DS-60 is if you are doing a name change through them. If you are changing your name to your legal, to a private name, a ecclesiastic name, your given name, you need two longtime family members or friends or a combination of, have them fill out a DS-60 in front of a notary or an acceptance agent and put your new name in there. Once you do this, your book and or card or both or one of the other or the other, will have your new private and give it name on there. This will further separate you from the legal entity. Okay? So that is an option for certain people who want that done. Do you have to do that? No. But if you have a given name that you want to start using, and you want to get your ID, this is how you do it. Or you can also do a legal name change down at the courthouse. Take you about 30 to 45 days. Or you can do a common law name change. Where you start changing your own uh, credit cards, your electric bill. Whatever it is, you get one and then you use that to get the next. You use that to get the next. I was waiting for somebody to say that. Why the Freemason symbol behind the wolf up here in the right corner? Because I'm a Freemason. I'm a past master. Okay? I belong to all that. I've never hidden that from anybody. And I won't hide that. I don't lie to you guys. <laughs> all right? We keep it real around here. All right? We don't, we don't lie in this house. We don't keep secrets. All right? So... Let's move on to the additional information. Like I say, people can either like it, love it, or leave it. All right. There's no big conspiracy here. I'm just somebody who likes knowledge. So I've learned their knowledge. How do you think I know the stuff that, um, uh, you know, I know? <laughs> so, yeah, if you don't like it, bye. <laughs> I've never hidden that from day one. All right. So if that's if, if you're based on that because of something that you uh, were told or you read or you think, you know, OK, it's cool. All right. I'm a private person, but I don't hide anything. 
So now let's get back to the video. Share the screen. I mean, if I wanted to, I could have just lied about it or pulled it off or hidden. I mean, you know. No, people think you practice magic. No. As I'm saying, you guys, um, you guys, let me get back. Let me address this real quick. First of all, I don't care if people like me or don't like me. All right. I'm not going to lie to you. All right. I'm not like other people. This is not controlled opposition. If you feel hung up in some type of way. All right. Go do your thing. Peace out. All right. If you're here for knowledge and that's what I acquire, no matter where I go, I've been approached by by uh, Illuminati members. If you want to know the truth, I didn't join that. Okay. So if you're hung up on that, that's that's your hang up. All right. All I can tell you is I joined it. And my hand to God, because we do believe in God, that I've never partaken in any kind of evil, dark, satanic, anything. Nothing. All right. whole bunch of old dudes eating food, um, doing uh, uh, highway cleanups and um, what do you call it? Um, charities and and um, and uh, uh, scholarships. But if you believe that all of them see, let me let me just tell you this. There are non-recognized Masonic fraternities out there, meaning they can do whatever they want to do using our same symbols and logos. And they are called clandestine lodges. They do whatever they want to do. We don't, we can't do that. We have a huge book we have to abide by. We have the Bible. I got a Masonic Bible right there. Okay. A special Bible. If if we were practicing magic and devil stuff, you don't have a, a Bible. So let's just dispel this right now. Boom. There it is. Okay. Issued. Blue for the canopy of God. Peace and love and tranquility amongst all of your men, your brothers. So that's, that's, what, that's just what it is. All right. Now let's get back to the education. Either you're here to learn or you're here to feel how you want to feel. But let's get to it. All right. So. Set it. Share screen. All right. So now your date of birth. Okay. Now they've got the X in there if you don't want to put male or female. But let's get the number four, the place of birth. It says here city and state if in the US. Well, they're not telling us if that's the corporate US or the geographical United States of America. So what's the other or or right next to it says city and country as it is presently known. So for me, I put the city and then USA, okay? Because that's my country for sure. Your social is good to put brackets around the box or box it. It means it's four corners rule. But we already know how to apply now without a social if you so see fit. Email, optional. Primary contact number, optional. Number eight, your mailing address. You can use a P.O. box if you choose. This is where they're going to send it. So put now here's a key thing. All right. For the mailing address on number eight, you're going to want to put whatever name. That you want, that is your given name. Why is this important? Well, if you're starting to use your private side, they're going to mail this to you. With your given name. And if you're trying to uh, separate the public and the private, have them send it to your house in your legal or your your um, non-legal, your given name, your celestial name, your private name, whatever it is, if you want to. You do not have to. OK, you can use your legal legal name. You're fine. This is an opportunity to start your private side. All right. Fire information, guys. I'm just telling you guys how to move. This is what I've done. I am a knowledge seeker. I seek light. Okay. Knowledge, information. Okay. I'm going to tell you guys something private too. How about that? Normally I don't share private. Yeah. I've literally had certain groups out there send me contracts to join them and I refused it. Okay. I'm not. That's why I keep the white in the background, white and light. Okay. You know, but also black and white, the checkered floor of good and evil in life. All right. So I do study every kind of book. 
but that doesn't mean I practice everything that I read. I read it to learn how they move. And if you're afraid of knowledge, if you're afraid of who's presenting the knowledge, then that's on you. I can't help you with that one. All right. I follow knowledge and I have God in my heart. So that's how people should be. But I get it. Certain people, certain religions, certain faiths and whatever else. All I know is if you believe in the creator or a creator, or a positive and good creator, he wouldn't tell you to limit your knowledge. He would say, be a man of the world, but don't be of it. So, all right. So back to the video, back to the lecture at hand. Okay. So share screen. So use your given name for your mailing address. Put care of C forward slash O or C O care of. This means that you live that you don't live there, but you receive mail there. You do not want them to be able to say you are domiciled there. And there's nothing illegal around with it, because if you look at the small writing. I can't highlight it uh, above where it says address line two. at the end, it says example use care of. So they're telling you they're giving you your remedy right there. OK, so for me. Address care of, you know, given name, city. I usually write out state right here or put a put the three digit or the three letter um, abbreviation. Zip code, if you're going to use it, put brackets. Otherwise, you can put in all zeros. Sometimes the post people don't like that. It annoys them. <laughs> So if you do use it, it's not the end of the day because or end of the world because you put care of. So they can't say you're domiciled there. Country. It says if outside the United States, well, they're not telling me America or geographical. So I put United States of America or USA here. Now, when we talked about the name change using the DS60, number nine here is list all other names you've used. So if I'm doing this with my name change. I'm filling out all this information with my new name, okay? And I'm going to put my old name here because what does it say here? Legal name change. Well, I'm putting my legal name here. Or if you want, you can reverse it and put your, you know, uh, legal name up here and then your given name down in number nine. And then we're going to get to the next page. Down here, you are not going to touch any, well, you can fill in the basic information of what ID you're going to use but do not sign it, okay? Some people like to put UCC 1-308 down here or all rights reserved. Do that at the very end. After you've signed this, he lets you take the oath, then slide it in there with your name. It freaks them out when you put stuff in the box. All right? And if you're doing it, you can staple your picture in the box over here. Four, one in each corner. Boom, boom, boom. Fill out nothing else down here that they are supposed to do. Do not, do not, do not line out anything down here in the oath. They could consider that tampering with the federal oath or a federal document. That's why you have an explanatory statement. Okay. So now we're going to get to the final page. In just a moment, we're going to take a little break. Yes, um, the zip gives them jurisdiction because it is a paper level jurisdiction that they own. So yes, and James Jones, yes. Oh, we're getting we're getting there. That's that's going to be the coup de gras in a minute. We got that coming. It's the last section nobody could figure out, and uh, me and a couple of viewers cracked that code. So we're gonna we're bringing that one. Yeah, you can use a live life claim, um, your uh, given name. Yep. Yeah, as long as you can, you can use, you can turn your name into whatever you want. <clears throat> so uh, Lee Law says white, uh, for example, white supremacy can mean what most people think it is. And you want to throw in. Yeah, it's the same thing. There are good people in white supremacy and there's bad people. So I found that out in Masons. Not every Mason's good. 
Hell, I found some clandestine lodges out there and was like, uh, what's that? You know what I mean? Uh, there's good Christians and there's bad Christians. So if somebody's turned off by, like, I've, I've known people who are straight up devil worshipers, straight up. And they know I'm a man of God and light. We talk. And we'll be like, well, why do you like the devil? Why do you like God? We'll go into it. All right. <laughs> so like I said, the, the biggest thing about this is if somebody's a D-bag, then they're a D-bag. I'm not going to base that off of because somebody's Arabic or, you know, Islam or or uh, uh, whatever. If you're a D-bag, you're a D-bag. But we are. So the biggest thing that the system wants is for us to argue and fight amongst ourselves. And then by what Sung Tzu's the uh, art of war, they're dividing and conquering us. I'm not afraid to go and look for knowledge. Um, healing goddess. Yeah, I think I did get your email. If, if you didn't get anything back for me at this point, then either I didn't get it or it got lost. So if you don't hear from me by tomorrow, um, then just email me again. Yep. Honey Badger, you are fire. You are correct. You are correct. Ooh, Big John, Big Sexy. I did not think of that. See, this is why we work together. He said, so do you put the city and the zip in the brackets? We had just been putting the brackets around the zip. The city is, in fact, a municipality. That's interesting. That's interesting. That's a, that's a thought. You could. You could box it. Well, but what I noticed that's interesting is that everything that they have are in boxes. All of it is within boxes. Now, on the second page, you're gonna we're gonna disclose that everything are in open boxes, no bars. Think about it, guys. There's somebody out there right now who's watching this video who does this and like, oh, they figured it out. It's dirty son of a. <laughs> OK, there, you guys have to pay attention. Everything that they do in the smallest of detail, the differences, the color is there for a reason. Somebody okayed that to be done. Uh, Texas Red and Kaylee. All right. They send in 20. So thank you. If I can find where you guys. Oh, there it is. I will put, post it up. Off topic question. All right. For 20, we can do it. Have you ever seen the word stillbirth subscribed box 19A on the Texas long form BC or is that um, or for that matter, any BC? Yeah. So it's really weird. They do do that. Educational information only. OK, just education. If the female or the birth person, as they say now, um, if they found that there was another sack that could have been a person in there they they will put that on there okay and i'll and i'll and here's why or sometimes they consider the uh placenta because of the nerve uh fibers and things in there to be a potential another person and i hate to bring it down like this but that is money that's why they want to keep the umbilical cord and the and the afterbirth and the placenta because there's money to be made there. OK, so if they can say still birth, they can write it up. As, oh, there was almost possibly another being there. There's money to be made there. So, yeah, they 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 they're cunning. They're very cunning. Yeah. So yeah, they use black because they're they are the summoners, the magicians, the ma magi, okay, which is your magistrate, magi, magic from the black, okay. And also for me, and no offense, to anybody, you know, there's good people in Black Lives Matter, and there's bad people. Same thing, okay. Um, if you know who's behind Black Lives Matter, you know, maybe or maybe not, you would maybe follow it. But once again, no matter what, there's still people who are good people in there trying to do the right thing. Yes, yes, wait, wait, where to go? I just missed it. Oh, yeah, there we go. 
My old passport has three bright red star stars. Starts. I know what you meant. Stars on my photo, usually to the left. Uh, the new one has six hidden stars. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you were red zoned. Tara, Tara, sorry. You were red zoned. That means after you got your new one, they upgraded you because you weren't out there doing anything wild and crazy. They can elevate you from being a, a citizen or a low level national state citizen to a five or a six or whatever they want to do. So if they have six now, that's something new. They might have done it because of videos like this and whatever else, you know, or they there's new new statuses that they've added. We don't we'll never know 100 percent of what all they're doing. And, and to be honest. Should we really? Eh, maybe. Mm, I don't know. I'm I'm just I'm just here for uh, to drink my copper cup. <laughs> and water and provide you guys with some entertainment of stuff I've done in my life. Ralph says, right, New York Republic. Yep. Yeah. Um, Michael, for the rural free delivery, that's going to be in the next section we're getting to. But yes, you have to give them an address. They can literally send um, the document to. You can't BS on the first section. The second section we're about to get to right now. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Oh, wait. You got one last person comment on that. DJ Jen says the placenta is your twin. Yep. The straw man dead at sea. Yes, yes. I didn't know if I wanted to go into all of it, but yes, you are right. That is basically what I was trying to allude to, but you are correct. They're slightly different being born in the Commonwealth, but uh, because that is its it that is its own private jurisdiction you know each, believe it or not uh each not each state but number a number of states are actually privately owned by their own types of jurisdiction on the state level so let's take florida F the florida state is different than the state of florida and the state of florida much like in pennsylvania has a commonwealth. So there's Pennsylvania State and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Those are different jurisdictions that somebody owns. The Republic side is open to everybody. It is the people, the land that we own. So there is a slight difference, but we've been able to do this for everybody around the United States and from Washington, D.C. So don't trip. Not a biggie. All right. So... is New Jersey private state. Um, there's New Jersey, there's New Jersey state, and then there's a state of New Jersey. Those are two separate things like we were just saying. W. Lucio says, hey, Wolf, what's going on? Good to see you live. Thank you, thank you. I like, yeah, I like doing the lives. Uh, what about Republic of Texas? Yep, yep, you can say Republic of Texas or Texas Republic. Texas state is different than the Republic of, uh, excuse me, the state of Texas. Those are all different jurisdictions. You can ask them. You can ask them, are they the same thing, same business? They'll say no. So you have to ask the, the right questions. We always just assume they're all in the bed together, which kind of are. State, national, or American national domiciled in the Republic. Um, well, you'd be a state citizen of the Republic of California. The Department of State doesn't recognize state national nor American national. They only recognize state citizen, national, national of the United States. But yes, you can use the terminology and how you want to call yourself. But officially, if you look at what they refer to us as, which doesn't mean they are our boss, we are their bosses, you can call yourself whatever you want to call. Just if you're dealing with law enforcement or the state, you got to use their terminology so that we can beat them at their own game. So, yes, each state has a Republic side. Yep, all of them. All of them at one point in time had people there who were the Republic. All right, so let's jump into the video before I get lost in questions. Sorry, guys, we're jumping back in. Otherwise, we will be here for four hours. All right, so back at the lecture at hand. 
All right. So before we go on, let's take a look at. All right. So hold on. Let me make sure I'm on the right page. Nope. Let's. Want to get to a different page. Okay. So back on the Department of State, otherwise known as travel.state.gov, passport forms. Okay. Make sure the image of the application covers the entire page. Vertical passport, blah, blah, blah. Print your... Okay. So if you print it, it needs to be printed on 8 by 5, 11 inches. So if you're doing your own... Has to be on standard legal size paper. Okay, letter size. Do not double side the form. Okay. If you're if you're doing a brand new one, you need a DS11. If you've lost your passport or it was stolen, you can do a new DS11. If your Renewing, now this is just my information here, what I believe. <clears throat> if you're do if you're renewing, you can use a DS82. Okay. Now there's come some question because on the DS82, they do not talk about the mom and dad status. Now, what we do know is that when doing the passport, they take into account your mom and dad status for yours. So if you mark off mom and dad are U.S. citizens on your first application on your DS-11, and then now you're doing a renewal, you're not able to change your parent's status. But what we're about to talk about later might be the game changer for a renewal. So we're going to see. Also, if you have a name change, a data correction, you can use a DS-54, or excuse me, a DS-5504. OK, so you're going to keep those, the DS-82 and the DS-54 in mind for when we talk about in, some information later. OK, coming up. Otherwise, just know that your uh, DS-11 can still be renewed. OK, excuse me. Your passport book and your card can be renewed up to five years after it has expired. I think I have an understanding of why. It used to be immediately it was no good. But now they're saying with a pass, a use, an expired passport up to five years, you can still renew it. If you choose to not, then yes, you can use a new DS-11. Can you create your own live birth with a new name and receive a passport? Yes. But you better have everything done right. You have to have an affidavit showing your name change, your common law name change. You have your birth certificate with the name change on there. We've already done it. This is what we've been doing the last couple of months. We've been trying to work out everything and make sure that it is good information that we are providing. Okay, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get into that aspect too, Bill. But yes. OK. So if you have a current passport and it's not expired, they are not going to let you just do a DS-11. Unless somehow one of them lets you slide it by. Every time I've ever went, they said, nope, if you have a current one, you can only either update it with a DS-82, a name change, a DS-5504. You cannot just do a DS-11 and a new DS-11. So. If you have lost it on a hiking trip, <coughs> not that we condone that, uh, you losing them, because I happen to know from firsthand experience, if you've lost both of them on a hiking trip or a camping or a whatever, you will be put on the naughty list. As somebody who's gotten off of the naughty list, because I was very irresponsible, and lost both of them, then they will give you a temporary one for a year that you can use, and then you will have to reapply brand new. But if you have lost 
your book or it was stolen, then that is when you can use a new DS-11. Okay? So remember, do not make fraudulent statements. Be respectful and responsible with your materials. Education and entertainment information only. Okay. Yes. All states, here's one of the other things people don't know. All states have their own constitution, but their constitutions are subservient in most almost everything to the Constitution for the United States of America. But Washington, D.C. also has its own Constitution because they are privately owned and operated. They're not a member state. Uh, you have the right to bear arms. Remember, what they sell you, though, is a firearm. Those are differences. Okay. That's all I will say for that. We've made other videos on that education. All right. So let's get back to the application at hand. Um, To answer your question about the DS-64, yes. That if you have lost your passport, you can use a DS-64. And then uh, that goes in conjunction with the DS-11 to apply for a brand new one. Yes. All right. Some of these questions are off topic, so and we have to get this stuff going. So, all right. Now, okay. Um, nope, we don't want to do that yet. Okay. So. The passport. Now, here's where it starts getting good. Let's go. All right. Now, notice over here how this side of the application does not have any bars across them, like these here, where you sign is also open. Now, my thought is that this represents the living man, the living being, freedom, even though it's still in a box technically, but freedom to roam around. Everything up here talking about your IDs and whatnot are all in boxes. Where you live in their jurisdiction, boxes, serial number, boxes. Name up here in boxes. Down here, open open rectangular box, open space. Could I be right? Could I be wrong? Don't know, just my thoughts. Okay. Last name, first name, middle, date of birth. Now, we all know because of the videos that we've done before that they've updated, upgraded these sections over here, which is great. So thank you, Department of State, for updating this after 18 years of not doing it per these videos. That's awesome. So thank you guys for your due diligence in the matter. All right. So now, these go either way. You can put mom and father here or on the one below, mom or father there. It's identical. What they've added, they added that. And now a place of birth says city and state if in the U.S. Or what I have done, I put the city, okay, and then the country, which is the United States of America right here. Then gender is up to you. Now, if you're a U.S. citizen, obviously you would be checking yes. Or if your parents are U.S. citizens, you would check yes. For those people who are state citizens, non-citizen nationals, our truth is that our parents are not the ENS Legis, the all caps name. Look, these are open boxes for the living, uh, living private person, natural being. So they are not the U.S. citizen. Now, if you were born in Washington, D.C. and your parents were, then yeah, you want to check off U.S. citizen. Now, if you do something outside of that, I don't want to know. That's on you. I'm not condoning anything. I'm just telling you what I've done from my perspective. My mom and father were born in their city and in the country known as United States of America. So we check no to U.S. citizen. Now, could we check yes? Yeah. Would it be a lie? No. 
because they have that side. But for this purpose, we're not utilizing that. And that's a status. And we're talking about standing. So as far as I'm concerned, my standing and understanding of my parents are that they are both not U.S. citizens. So no to, no to these two questions. Now, you do what's best for you from your understanding because law is based on your perception of the information. Okay? I'm not telling anybody to do anything. I'm also letting you know that anything you see on my videos are considered education, entertainment, and you do not have to do everything that's listed on my YouTube website or anything like that. You can choose to do it, but you do not have to. And it does not mean if you do all of them, you're suddenly a U.S. or a, excuse me, you're suddenly a, a state citizen or national. You are that by the moment you understand the differences in jurisdictions. You are a some would, some would refer to it as a territorial citizen versus a statutory citizen. You are a private person, national, versus a corporate legal entity, legal fiction, ens legis, straw man, nom de gore, Latin for war name. But you can operate either of those sides. That's why you've seen documents where some said given name and some said legal name. If you're doing legal stuff, you put a legal name, which is why the from my perspective, the first part of the application is for your legal your legal entity. And the second part of the application is for which is sponsoring. And the second is for the lowercase, um, which thanks uh Aragon for that. Um information. So, yes, to answer the question, you're right. I did forget that part. You should be filling it out in all lowercase. Okay. Now, will the processing person understand it? Probably not. But we want to remove any parts where we think that we might be talking about the legal. If you're talking about the legal entity, it's the all uppercase, and you should put it in all uppercase. If that's how you're con you are presenting the information. If you're talking about yourself in the private, then it's all lowercase. Um, Des says. If parents are both deceased, do I check no for you? So, yeah, you are now the inheritor of their estate and all information that is theirs. And if you, if it is your perception that they have a U.S. citizen side and a um, national side or state citizen side, you can choose which one for your application you want to be presented. They didn't say list all of your nationalities and status. Otherwise, they'd have it check those things off. So if you're checking no to U.S. citizen, you're not taking anything away from them. You're not forcing them to renounce. You're just saying for this application, I want their information to be portrayed that they are a national. So however you feel that it applies, that is what it is. Um, and Turd Polisher says, yes, answer no to you everything everywhere. There might be some times that you want to check that. That is a personal thing. But I definitely agree with Turd. Um, I always go all lower. Don says all lowercase or first upper and lower. First upper and lower is capitus medius, um, which is means that you are you're still declaring that you are you have a little bit of the U.S. citizen in you, just tip, and then the rest of you is private. So it's not horrible. But if I had my choice, I would go all lowercase. Um, Jar Jar, to answer, how difficult is the five star? Well, we don't know exactly what their full requirements are. We just know that in the explanatory statement, we tell them that we're non-belligerents, non-combatants, and that we are have a treaty with the United States, or we're offering a treaty, we're private, and a whole lot more information, but that's that's the basis of it. There's also some codes we're going to take a look at real quick. Uh, Bill says, everybody born in one of the 50 states, okay, which we'll say geographical states, meaning the land, you are a state citizen and a national. You are just removing the presumption, okay? Vintage says, my E-Verify used to say it worked. Yeah, of course. Yep. Yep. That's fire. Nobody was talking about that. We brought that My E-Verify here. I've never seen one person with that My E-Verify process, neither with the SS5 and all the good fire stuff. Uh, just tip, you <laughs> Batman. What are you talking about? 
Um, what if a child was born in DC and mother in Maryland? Yeah. Um, then you would want to create an affidavit based on the mother being in Maryland and saying that um, that's how you want to be portrayed, is that your mother is that. And if your mother's from DC, there's no star on there. You don't have to put on there that, yes, she was. You don't have to provide there. There's nowhere on there on it where it says star and must required. None of that. So if you don't want to share the fact that the mother is was born in D.C., you don't have to. They're asking you from your your opinion. Your 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 understanding. What's the my verify? The my verify is when you um, go to my verify.gov. You have the ability to change the status of your passport and your uh, book, passport book, passport card, and your social security when used for a background check. You can literally change it in there to, I think they changed the wording now. It used to say U.S. citizen or national. Um, now they changed the definition of that. So make sure it applies to you. But all of us who got it done before they changed the terminology, not that they can stop you from changing, you still from checking it. But now the way it reads is unless your parents are nationals, then you, sh you know, that then you if, if, if you're declaring that your parents are nationals, then you would still check the nationals of the United States option over there. OK, so that's a personal thing. So if you feel that you are. Uh, I haven't I haven't been there in a while, but if it still says just U.S. citizen. Um, then obviously if you're declaring you're not, then the only other option is that because you can only be two things when you're here. So if U.S. citizen is not what you are, then whatever they have listed must be what you are, process of, of elimination. Um, and it's also how you have the capacity to read and interpret the definitions behind that. So when they just at the end of it say, or your parent uh, is a national well then that's me my parents are nationals so i'm going to check off that other one okay but but remember they are now running the term citizen of the united states to mean all of the statuses and all of the territories all of that in in one so there could be some things where if they don't have anything else as an option to check and there's no other box for you to write in or provide your paper statement or explanatory statement of what and who you believe you are, then a citizen of the United States would be your option. Okay. Mm, uh, okay. And last question for right now, aren't U.S. citizens also U.S. nationals? Okay. So they're looking at it as what you are right now. If we're splitting hairs at from the beginning, from the beginning, you were born as a national and a state citizen. Then you, for those of us born in the 50 republic states, geographically United States of America, we are nationals and state citizens first. And then we acquired our U.S. citizenship through the birth certificate and other identifying documents. And if you want to be legal about it, if you're born in Washington, D.C., you are a U.S. citizen first. And then you acquired your 14th Amendment, or no, then you acquired your nationality. <laughs> Vintage says on, on uh, my you verify, you're in the top three. Congrats. Yeah, nobody was doing it before we did it. Yeah, same thing with the explanatory statement and all that stuff. And it should be the SS5 process, too. We did a lot of stuff here first. Um, circling. Now, in the old days, Josh... Yes, you could do that. But that's why we. Uh, as long as you're not crossing out national the way they and we will we will talk more about that in a minute. But I don't want to touch or circle anything on the application. I've heard some stories about people who have. That's why you, you provide an explanatory statement. But we will cover that in a little bit. Jason says he did it. Yeah, yeah, we we started that, bro. We started a lot of things here. Hell yeah, you know, hell yeah. All right, so let's get back to the video. We got we got lots of ground to cover. All right. So, 
now that we see that these are open spaces, no to mom, no to dad, or if you want to put just one birth parent there, no to that person. I, If you're going to leave the boxes open, I would put lines through it or put NA for not applicable. And then I would still check off no, because we don't want like them to accidentally fill it in or do anything. And if they do, if any of these people at the um, post office or whatever else make one mark on your, your personal information, that is a federal offense. They are tampering with your federal document because that is not yours. Re tell them to remove that or do a brand new one. If you have any problems with these people, go to ask for the manager. Tell them you want to speak to them in private or privately or go to another facility and then report them to the Department of Travel, Department of State. Okay? They will be in major pro in trouble. So, number 11, have you been married? Now, in the old days, let me stop screen sharing so you guys can see my, my put them. In the old days, back in my day, the original ones back in the 90s, I think it was. Yep, back in the 90s, maybe early 2000s, used to say on number 11. This is the only reason why... I believe in the status change. This is what the, got the wolf started. Is because number 11 in the old days said, are you a U.S. citizen or are you a state citizen? Now, if anybody out there has that, a copy of that original one where it has that info, send it to me in email. Email me the, the whole thing, blot out your information, or I will do that. Um, but it used to say, you are you a U.S. citizen or your state citizen? So they straight up asked you to self-determine. So there is a real status. So if you notice on the bottom of the DS11, what does it say now? Now they can't get rid of the status. They have they do not have the power to get rid of the state citizen status. At best, maybe they can hide it or call it something different. So if we look at the application, what does it say? It says U.S. citizen. So that's the same. Okay. Under the penalty and perjury on the page one of two, the first page in the bottom where you sign right above it, it says either I, I declare under penalty of perjury that I'm either a U.S. citizen or what? A non-citizen national. Well, we know they combine the term state citizen national together. So the term non-citizen national, non-citizen cancels. You're not a citizen. And what does it leave? A national. People in Washington, D.C. are nationals. People from the American 50 states, the Republic are nationals. People in Atlantis are nationals. People in Australia are nationals. But we know here only two types of people can get one, either a U.S. citizen or somebody from here. So if you're not claiming to be a U.S. citizen, that only leaves what? National. There it is. The proof is in the pudding. Get like me. Um moment if there's child support block what is the best way to navigate around it uh i can't say i necessarily know a way to navigate around it but i have educational information that could help you deal with child support potentially what you do with the information i provide is up to you it's education but we can talk about that in the private with a uh, consultation um and you know Individual results may vary, but um, might be something there to help. Can't promise anything because you can't promise anything about anything, really. Um, okay, so let's get back to the... Thank you guys for all the comments. I'm sorry, I, there's no way I can get to all of them. There's almost 450 people watching. Somebody said, let's get that those likes up. If you guys have remedies you want to share with him that you know about in the comments, go ahead. If you want to promote your website, you know, your own YouTube channel, go ahead and post it in the, yep, I seen King of the North. Here you go. Here's some information. King of the North. Bam. There it is. Okay. So there's lots of information out there. Share that in the comments. Light it up. Light the comments up. This is why I do this. I do this to get the information out there for that. But then, so you guys, I guess it's probably over there or you know, that way, I think. That way you guys can network and figure out information. And now, as always, vet the information. Look it up for yourself. Do not take the information because a madman like me is in a box 
I could be crazy as all hell. All right. So I'm from D.C. So what does that mean again? So D.C. just means that you were born a 14th Amendment U.S. citizen. You are a Washingtonian or Washingtonite, I think they call it. And it means that you are also a national. And we're going to show the code. OK, so you are a national as well. You're a national of Washington, D.C. You're a citizen of D.C. You're a national of the United States of America. And there's a code. We're going to go over that. OK, so you start off being a U.S. citizen, 14th Amendment, and then you acquired your nationality here in the states. We start off as a national and state citizen and then acquired the 14th Amendment U.S. citizen. OK. I've already spent hundreds with James. Thank you. Outdoors. Hopefully you found everything to be fire. I know a lot of people said the consultations were fire. Um, oh, there it is. Okay. You just, I didn't see other comment. Thank you for that. Love you, James. You've changed my life. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm humbled by you guys. Uh, Daniel Edwards says hit that like button again. First thing. All right. Everybody should study uh, code 18. Uh, donate to the wolf and get the docs. Thank you for that. Uh, wolf Rick says, okay, that's not bad. Okay. Okay. I, I'll back off. If we got off, that's, that's, that's good. That's probably the highest I've ever seen everybody. We've actually just now broken records on how many people have watched me concurrently on a live. And this is the highest right there amount I've ever seen watching and likes. So thank you guys. And uh, keep lighting up the comment section, uh, work with each other, answer the questions for those of you guys who are my students and have learned, um, light it up. This is this is like one of the biggest shows we're probably ever going to have right here. All right. So let's get back to it. We're almost at two hours. OK, we're ahead. We're ahead of schedule. So, OK, we got, we're going to have some time on the clock. Uh, let me share a screen. Let's get back to it. All right. So now that we know that we're on the free side, the du jour side, the open box side, number 11 used to say, are you a U.S. citizen or are you a, you, uh, are, are you a state citizen? Now, this was a long time ago. I got this right from the postmaster at the place by me. OK, so now it says, have you been married? They make this sound like this is about your spouse. The key word in here is have you. So this is about you. Have you been married? Yes, no, doesn't really matter. Then it says, if yes, complete the remaining items in number 11. Now, this is, to me, not accurate. This should not be in here. It says, if yes, complete the remaining items. Okay, so, but here's the thing. This is a two-part question. This is not all about the same thing you think it is, from my, from my perspective. So you put your wife's name or husband's name. Full name, spouse, blah, current, all that. Date of birth. Now, why would it say place of birth here? Okay. Knowing full well, if, if your place, place of birth is here in the United States of America, then they're a U.S. citizen. And then yet underneath here, it says U.S. citizen question mark. Then date of marriage. Have you ever been widowed? So once again, it's about you. Don't forget. See, I see what they're saying here and I see, but I know what they're doing. Okay. Now remember, this is optional. And if you notice up to this part, they did not ask you what your status is, right? So from my perspective, when you see a question mark, a period or whatever else, that means that is the end of one sentence and you go on to the second. So this is a two part question. So the remainder of the marriage part is at the place of birth. Now you drop down to the second part of number 11. It's still about you. So they're asking you, are you a U.S. citizen? Yes or no? Now, the thing that I can say from, ex from living experience is that I don't see where it says, are you a state citizen on here anymore? I want that option. It's not here. So I'm checking no, because by default, if I'm not a U.S. citizen, and there's only two statuses they can make us, then I'm a state citizen by checking no to U.S. citizen. 
And now, because there's a question mark here, that's the end of that next sentence. It's a it's a it's really a three-part. So now the next question in that sentence, or bullet point, if you will. Now, what's the date of marriage? And have you ever been widowed or divorced? And here's the final part of number 11. So this is like a three-part. I see one, one um, exclamation, two exclamation, or excuse me, question mark, one question mark, two, three. So this is a three-part. Now, you can perceive that information how you want, but that's how I look at it, okay? So no to mom, no to dad, and no to number 11. Because I don't see, other than that, I don't see anywhere where they straight out ask me directly what my, what I believe my status is. And here's what I know. The postmaster at the post office told me word for word, okay? He said, oh, you had the old DS-11. They don't make those anymore. He said, now if you want to be a state citizen, it's all in how you fill out the, pa the passport application. There it is. All right. Right from the postmaster. I didn't make that up. It's not my words. And to answer other people's questions out there, is this still their doc? Is it still their ID? Yeah. They issued it. Is it a contract? Yep. Will my name still end up with the uh, all caps on there? Yep. Jaquan says, can I amend the, a passport that I've already done? Yep. That's um, either a DS-82 or a uh, fifty DS-5504. Okay. Now, educational information I got from a military lady who loves me to death and she shared information. Vet the information for yourselves, but apparently she ind has indicated to me that her and her brother use their authenticated and, ap and apostilled birth documents, shall we say, when traveling or for traveling. Giving you guys lots of fire here. Lots of fire. As always, vet the information. It's just education. So we will talk more about, uh, see so you guys are getting there. So some of the people in the comment section uh, are already talking about the crew de gras because they they were in on the the explanatory statement and in the Wolfpack private area on YouTube, and so they got some of the information early. So uh, somebody says, "The does the asterisk mean anything?" Well, yes, the asterisk and stars have a quantum syntax grammar meaning. We talked about that in another video. So, yes, I told people. People were like, whoa, Wolf, th those things don't mean anything. There's nothing there. There is not one dot on the passport, book, card, anything else that they ever issue you that doesn't have a meaning. The color, the quantum syntax grammar of it all has a meaning. They don't. They have professionals. They pay a quarter million dollars a year to keep their, their stuff in their legal department. Okay? They all mean something. But, yes, the asterisks are sometimes called stars. And the stars are sometimes called asterisks. They're, they're really one and the same. They're actually, you know, it's kind of like what the pound sign and the uh, whatever they call it now. What do they call it? The hashtag. Same thing. So those are the same thing. Um, and Jeffrey, yes, we're going to be talking about that code right now. We're getting to it. Some people don't know that. You guys are ahead of the game. All right. <laughs> All right. So back to the... Shared screen, if you please. Okay. So, additional contact number, optional. Occupation and employer. My educational thoughts only. Occupation is a military term. You are militarily occupying what? This age, or, or excuse me, this uh, occupation. So I'm leaving that blank. Number 14, employer, school, all the school, well, I shouldn't say all the schools, but your employer 
if you're if you have an employer, then that means you are an employee. And if you're an employee, let me show you this. If you're an employee under 18 U.S. Code 912, an officer or an employee of the United States, you're a government agent. That's why the government can have those signs up for your equal opportunity employer that says they can't treat you any kind of way because you are their employee. They are the employer. That's why there's more power in an EIN, which is an employer identification number. Because that means you're not an employee. You're moving with the big dogs. Okay. Now, here's another, here's another gem, if you know how to interpret the information. In order to be an employee under 4 U.S. Uh, Code 72, public offices and seat of the government, all employees are attached to the seat of government, shall be exercised in the District of Columbia and not elsewhere except otherwise expressly provided. So if you're considered an agent of the government, then they're saying everything that you're doing is based out of D.C., now, if you're an employee, you're in their jurisdiction, unless otherwise stated. So for me, and you're also supposed to be duly installed in anything considered public. Okay, that's all I'm going to say there. Lots of information there. All you got to know is at the end of the day, for my private purposes only, <laughs> though we're talking about it on a public platform, <laughs> educational information only. I'm not going to put an employer. I'm not going to put an occupation, additional contact. I may or may not, but your height, hair color, eye color, all that needs to be filled in. Once again, it doesn't say it's mandatory. It's not starred or in red or something like that. So if you want to battle them out for that, for your religious reasons, that's on you. But I don't I have no problem putting that in there. Travel plans. If you have travel plans and you're legitimately going somewhere, put it in. Because right now they're getting backed up. But you want to make sure that your travel plans are at least two and a half months out. So if you put a travel date here, they may contact you and say, well, we need proof of anything less than two months because that is too close for them. Some people have experienced by being just over two months, slightly expedited service. Otherwise, get the expedited if you have actual travel plans and you want to make sure you get on time. Now, we're going to drop down to number 19, public address or permanent address. If you read the section here, it says complete if you have a P.O. box listed in your mailing address. They will let you use one or the other. So if you have a P.O. box on the first page, then you need to put an actual address over here. Okay? But let's go into it. Or if the residence is different from the mailing address. So what you put on the first page, they're going to consider that to be your mailing address. I mean, that's where they can find you. Hence, if you use the zip code there, you are domiciled in their jurisdiction. As a permanent address. So it swaps. They can say, so that's why we use the care of, if you're doing this as a private person, on the first page. Care of this. I don't live here. This is just where I get mail. No zip or zip in the boxes. So on the secondary page, if you're following along, then what we do, and they show you the remedy, it says rule free delivery. You can put your street address here or rule free delivery or URB for, I think it's urban, urban route, urban route something. 
Anyway, we use rule RFD. Why? Because this means you're in the private. So we put for the street address, rule free delivery written out on number 19. If you choose to put the city, you don't have to, but you can just write in United States of America. No zip code. If you want to put the city, you can put the city there. Okay. If it's a unincorporated city, that's that's even better. Or you could put a uh, city of um, Memphis unincorporated. All right. Or just put United States of America. If you, but if you do want to put your city in state, then write out city unincorporated state. I would write out Republic of your state or uh, Texas state. Or as a minimum, you put the three digit abbreviation and not the two. And always all zeros in the zip code. Okay. Now, your emergency contact also optional. If you do it, I wouldn't put a zip. Don't put your buddy or whoever into their jurisdiction unless you choose to or they want to be or they are. 21. If you have lost your passport book or card or both, I highly suggest make sure you don't lose both. You will be put on the naughty list. You have to wait a year. You check off, yes, to which one that was stolen, no, or both. Whatever it is, you put, put it down and put the information down in the boxes if you have one. If you don't have one, this, this section doesn't apply to you. All right? So if you look down here in the please do not write in this section, so please do not write in this section. You can see all the information here. Now, if you look at the little box on the left-hand side, the second one down, it tells you naturalization certificate or naturalization citizen certificate. All the things that, they, that they're reporting on, report of birth, place, passport. What did you use for ID? Other, attached. Any of these other forms that you've used, DS-71, a DS-3053, DS-64, all that. Name as it appears on citizenship evidence. When I was at the passport agency, I literally knew more about the passport than the acceptance agent. Somebody says, can I use my old contractor, general contract EIN? Uh, I don't know for what, but if you're talking about the passport, um, that I don't know. Um, uh, if you are going to use that as a sponsoring entity, might go through, might not. Um, it's up to you to, to either contact them to ask or to try and what do they say? Um, it is better to ask for forgiveness than permission. <laughs> um, somebody said what? Uh, oh, so you guys are talking. Okay, my bad. All right, so now we're at the part where we're at two hours and we are about to get into the crew de gras, the last bit that nobody on YouTube has talked about unless they got the codes and whatever else from me because I've been doing this long enough, got my explanatory statement. They've squirreled the little information and put it on their channels, some of them as their own, which is a lie. Y'all ready? All right. We're going to wait a couple more seconds. Y'all just having a good old conversation over here. That's what's up. That's what's up. Somebody's asking about the My Ear Verify. Um, look me up on YouTube. We already covered that on the video and tonight already. So I don't want to go back over all stuff we've already done. Thank you, Firewater. Does your birth certificate give you give you state citizenship status? Well, remember, there's a difference between the master birth document, the certificate of live birth, and then the birth certificate. Your master 
baby fee print document is what gives you your state citizenship. And because you were born there, your your Bible gives you, if you have a Bible uh, record of birth, your homemade one, that's what gives it to you. Your birth certificate forms an allegiance. It's an application to being a 14th Amendment U.S. citizen or a federalized state employee, which comes with the 14th Amendment U.S. citizenship status. It's the first time you really get your name in all capitalized lettering. And that is a status. A living person has a standing because you stand above the water. They deal with maritime water admiralty jurisdiction. If you go, if you type in are all countries registered corporations, you're going to find that most of all of them are, except for your micronation. See what we're doing here? And there's some unincorporated counties out there. There's some unincorporated states. They don't own it all, but a lot of them, yeah, it's business. It's all business. The problem is we don't know how to do commerce. We don't know how to do the private side. That's what we're trying to learn here. We know how to do the public side and, and, and not that good. <laughs> My explanatory statement gets mailed with the DS-11, correct? Yes. Oh, uh, well, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Oh, no, because you shared the code? No, it's okay, bro. This this is the reveal. This is the reveal. It's all right. All right, so let's just jump into that part. Let's get there. All right, we're at the peak. We're almost at 500. Let's go. Now's the time. If you didn't get your popcorn, let's go. So we all we should all know if you've been watching my videos that we – so we know there's a state citizen status, okay, that – allows us to operate it our to represent our living being private side properly when in their jurisdiction. So you still got to put the smock on, okay? The passport book, the card, all that stuff is still their property. It's a smock. It's a it's a it's a mask right there. That wolf mask right there or they so the wolf mask would be the private one and this one right here, the court jester would be the public one. You're going to wear one or two of these masks in the United States and in the United States of America. When you're not in the United States Corporation, you're going to be wearing the court jester mask known as the all capitalized name. In the private, as a uh, non-statutory citizen, you're going to wear your wolf mask. What we've been doing is try to make sure that when we're over here doing business, that this is represented, or the real me is represented with the public transmitting utility. Okay, so let's look where we can find out the information that we've been talking about. Now, if you guys are in the VIP, you had this for the last two months or something like that. But tonight's going to be the big reveal for the rest of it and how to apply it. Even though we've, we've been talking about this a little bit already. So, with a lot of studying and searching on the internet, this is not hidden material. It's it's very seldomly found, but it's not anything where oh you can't find it. It's 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 you have to study, you have to look, you have to dig. Okay, that's what I did. That's what I do. I'm just very passionate about the password process. But this will be one of, if not the last. It'll be the second to the last one, unless we have any interesting updates that are like, wow, that's fire. Otherwise, this is the closeout for the for it. Okay. So we're going to share the screen. So this, my good people, is the Foreign Affairs Manual. This has information on how they do all of their processes around the world, but eight. FAM, Foreign Affairs Manual, FAM 505.2 is the unique section. Now, mind you, there's other sections that are missing and some that you have to click on and go in to see what's actually written in there. Okay? But we're not going to worry about that. We made a video on that before. We're talking about just this section right now. And as you see, 
it says unclassified. So we're not dealing with anything classified. This is unclassified. So do they? So that means do they have a classified section? I'm sure they do. They got lots of stuff classified. So if you guys want to back me up with the information and the codes and right and how did you know all this stuff, Wolf? We don't believe you about this, that, and the other. Here it is. Here is the complete breakdown. Well, let's just say this is the. We'll just say the sixty or seventy percent full breakdown of all of the passport pr pr um, public codes statuses where you can use it where you can't use it now a majority of this you cannot put on your own passport in your own book or any of that it straight up says authorized use only only used by the ca ppt sia okay they don't mind you seeing it but you can't use most of this but you can look at it okay so as we go down to the section that means anything, well, I shouldn't say that means the part that we, we're going to focus in on. So we now know that a D represents a diplomatic passport. A CD represents a courtesy diplomatic passport. Card means it's the passport card. O means it's official. N is for a no fee regular. Okay. We fall into the regular, the R. Okay, so unless you see them with another letter on there, this is what it is. You have a regular styled one. This is where we are. And then you've got an S for service. Okay. Now, I know some people heard about the, the rumor that, oh, if you see the P on there by the code or by the, um, the passport number, it means pauper. Nobody knows that for sure. It could mean personal. It can mean private. Um, it, it could just mean passport. We don't know. Okay. It's not listed here. And if you want to do further digging, you're going to have to look through here. Okay. The foreign affairs manual in the archive section, the sub chapter for other codes. What does it say here? If a previous endorsement code does not appear here in the list, it may be available in their foreign affairs manual archives or their 1992 in endorsement of list available in C-Web, or do a FOIA on it. So if you really want to know what the P stands for or whatever else, you've got the right to do a FOIA on it. Okay? Dropping gems here, guys. So now, here are all the other codes, but we're not going to worry about all those right now. We're going to get down to 08 all. We broke this like years back in the private. We, broke, we, we talked about this. In the VIP, we talked about a little bit about this in the explanatory statement. Talked about it a little bit in the uh, in some of the other videos. Here's the difference: we didn't know what it all meant. We knew to use it, and we didn't know where it goes. Now we believe we do. Educational information only. So let's go. Zero eight all. The bearer is also known, aka, as this being their given name. What? They say it right here. So if there was no difference between a, live, a legal and a given name, then why are they talking about? So you can use your given name or your surname, which is your legal. This is another way of saying your eng legis, your legal name. So you can have on there. So you let them know that the bearer of this card has a given name, meaning a private name, or a legal name. Bearer uses uses an assumed name in addition to their legal name. So they're calling your given name an assumed name. And they've got legal here, there, there in purple. And what do you call that? Italicized. So there's a meaning behind this that they don't show anywhere. There's a meaning here. Unless somebody's colorblind. No offense if you are. Um, okay. So we know that we can use, because it doesn't say use only when authorized by them. Okay. So we know that we can use this code in the, in the next one. Now let's go back up. It says the endorsement means an official stamped 
This is on the endorsement page on the book, or it's encoded in the card, an official stamped, or it can be a typed or written of the circumstance under which a passport was issued or can be used. The bearer may also be provided with any information notice that provides more information on the endorsement. So we can have this information. Dropping down here. So it says here, supervising counselor of officers abroad and directors of passport agencies and centers must use, must ensure that endorsements are processed correctly. So they're saying if you use one of the codes, you better make sure that you have the right one because they will reject your butt. Okay. So now as we're reading this, this doesn't say officers. It turns into you. You must use the standard wording given for each endorsement. You. It doesn't say the agent. It says you. You must use the given one. But it says do not modify the endorsement text unless you are spe unless you unless specifically authorized by them. We can use this. We never knew it was there. We never knew it was there. We never knew we could. Okay. So now let's put it out there. At present, does that mean we can use that and the next code and not the explanatory statement? Do we use it all? We don't know. So that's why this is brand new right off the shelf. But we're in the process right now. We've got our, 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 our wolf members, the inner circle people already know the information doing these things. And we're waiting to get the cards and books back to see what is said. Now, I myself, on one of mine, used both. And on one of mine, I only used the code. Now, how you guys want to use the information and move from here. Yes, the wolf. Woo! Woo, woo, woo! That's up to you guys. I'm just providing you with information. I still think having the passport uh, or the explanatory statement is awesome. Um, and I would highly suggest getting it and using it or creating your own. But now we know that we can also indicate this adjacent to that information or by itself. You can run either way with this information. Now, people have asked me, I've, I've got my book done. I got my card done as a national, but I don't see the endorsement page written on there. It says you are to rent to write or type. It says they can stamp it, okay? Or you can get a stamp, but it has to be legible and cleared. You can use the wordings on that page from the Foreign Affairs Manual for the passport. Don't forget to hit that bell, like, subscribe. Your boy's bringing you fire. So now all of you guys are going to know when you see, start seeing other people out there on their channels using this information, you know we had it here first. We did the research. This is why when people go, oh, I, I think you're wrong on the code, Wolf. I don't know if you have it right. This is all I do. I'll tell you this. Colonel Von Wilson of Copper Moonshine Stills was one of the first people to ever put this information out there. So thank you, Colonel Von Wilson. If you don't know who he is, go to Copper Moonshine Stills and buy a still, okay? We're making moonshine and uh, uh, fuel and whatever else you want to make, okay? Make sure you apply or you uh, see what's all appropriate for your state before doing anything, okay? But if you scroll all the way down on the left side of his page, you'll see Diplomatic Immunity Passport, okay? This is where people like me, Yusuf L, and all these other people got their information. The only difference is, is that me and Yusuf, we put it out there. This is where we got it from. I also work with a private person on the East Coast uh, who's a uh, who gave me the 128-page explanatory statement, and we worked, worked with each other. Um, so thank you. If you're still watching my channel, I know it's been years. Um, thank you for your work because it has helped us do this. So... Um, the explanatory statement has not been updated yet. We will 
put more information, but as of right now, it's not been updated. So if you get it, it's the same one um, that we've been using for the last, you know, X amount of time. So it's the if you have it within the last year, it's it's the most updated we have right now. All right. So now, without further ado, let's get to the final part that. Well, actually, we just started the final part, but I guess let's. Um, <laughs> All right, somebody is. Um, I guess my lady is watching. All right, the watchful eyes of of my lady. <laughs> okay, okay, I better watch myself. Guess I can't flirt with all the all the ladies and gents out there. You know, I might get into trouble. Uh, but yes, uh, much love to you, sweetheart. Appreciate you for watching. All all the other people who uh, appreciate my 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 beauty out there. Thank you guys for the compliments and uh, let's get back to it. All right. So um, sh present, share screen. All right. So now, um, so here we go, right on the internet, right on Google or Bing, whatever I'm on here. What are the four types of passports? So standardly, You've got the NFR, no free, and that comes in blue. The service passport, the S code, comes in gray. The official one in maroon comes with the letter O in maroon. The black one is a diplomatic passport. Comes with the letter D. And the regular ones that we get, though we get them as a state citizen, come in blue as well. And, we, and the code is R for regular. So there you have it. Okay, so now we've got up to speed with that, my good people. Uh, people are asking, can I do an update video with the uh, black light with the new passport? Um, I won't do one specifically on that. I mean, I might add that with some other information. I'll, I'll probably store a lot of little tidbits, and then we'll just do one video on all of it. I don't want to nickel and dime you guys with... Um, you know, a whole bunch of little tiny things. Dash, thank you. Jared says, uh, Series 7 broker. Oh. oh. Okay, oh, you guys are talking, my bad. All right, so let's get to the, let's 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 wrap up this section and then we'll get to just chatting and whatever else. So, remember, everything here is education and entertainment purposes. How you fill out your passport is on you and I assume no responsibility. Why do I say that people go? Well, because I don't know how people are moving out there and I don't know if you did it right or wrong or whatever. So, all right. So now that we've got that, let's, we're going to cue in on this section right here. So in watching the people, now mind you, this section right here does not say for authorized use only. So this is the part, guys. That's the part we've been missing. We've been missing the box in the upper right-hand corner the entire time. So uh, speed, and I think I know who that is, says, I got info from the Wisconsin Department Department of Revenue today. It is confirmation of exempt tax status for nationals. <laughs> Boo, yeah. Now, we knew that in the private. We've already been moving that way. But, yeah, there it is. Okay. So, yeah, that's where the trustee at the post office went crazy. So, let's talk about it, though. We have to talk about this correctly okay i want you guys to do anything jazzy so it does not say this is for official use it does not say that anywhere in here it says only down here now they are used to using this section but department of state if you guys want to slide this is for uh their use only then it needs to be in here otherwise this is a part of the heart of what we're where we put our information so when we get to this section, guys, this is the endorsement section. 
This is the endorsement section. Now, I've seen them write regular in here. Now, you should not be checking diplomatic D, official O, service S, or NFR. This is where they should be writing regular. So me personally, I would leave it blank because they're already going to know that it's regular because you don't have the other forms that go along with this for a diplomatic officer um, service nor no fee. Okay, I accidentally checked off no fee on mine because I figured, well, I don't see it written, so I check it off. They send it back. Okay, you're not a no fee. You're not a service member. You're not. You don't have special clearance to get it. So you have to pay, even though as nationals, we're not supposed to pay. Everything's supposed to be prepaid, but okay. So leave this blank up here. This is where they write no fee, or excuse me, this is where they write regular. Okay. But now let's look at the curious information down here. END. We thought this meant end or something. We didn't pay attention. This means endorsement codes. You, this is why they said you must clearly write that either here or in the book or have it stamped or typed clearly. So this is where your endorsement codes are. This is where you put that. So me, I would leave this section blank. They're going to write regular here just, just so that they don't go crazy on you. Right here, we know the first code that I use that you can do your own. I'm showing you guys where to find all the information. You make your own choice. Your experiences are your own. You're grown, or most, most of you should be. So we know 08 all can go right here. Now, the ex expiration, let's go back and take a look. Okay, let's drop back down. What's the next code? Now, mind you, most of these will have, ex some of these have expirations. Okay, some of these are one year, whatever. So we don't mess with the, we don't need to put anything in the expiration section. Just leave it alone. But right here, the show lady, 09 all. The bearer is a United States national. There it is. And not a U.S. citizen. So if you want to claim both sides, this is not for you. You were born as a national and then you acquired your other side, your legal side. What does it say right up here? Your sure name, your sure name. Your surname is your last, your last name, your legal side. That is your U.S. citizen side. You can claim that by itself if you want. You can claim both of these if you want. Just We think that's why we get the three star is because we haven't proven that we are one or the other. We're both. We're mixing jurisdictions as a U.S. citizen. So lowest common denominator makes us a, a U.S. citizen, which is why the capitalization of the first letter in our name, the U.S. citizen, but we're also a national. The national is what? Your given name, your territorial status, you're not sta your your statutory status, your public side is the sure is the surname and the legal and the U.S. citizen all combined. These are these are emblems for their side. The private side is the national. In the private with the given name, they break it down right here, guys. It's, cl it's clear as day. So what else does it say? When placed in a passport book, when placed, we already said up there, they said what you must place. So right here, placed in a passport book issued to a U.S. national who is not a U.S., who is not a citizen. The U.S. national will be printed instead of USA on the front of the passport card. Doesn't say anything about the, well, this part doesn't say it about the book. The book part is up here. Now, I know from seeing this, and I have it listed already in my other videos, they changed the wording in here. It used to say state citizen in here. They updated this to reflect the non-citizen U.S. national. So prior to the prior to the creation of this endorsement, so before 1992, 
The bearer status as a non-citizen U.S. national is indicated by circling the word national or crossing out the word citizen. This is what they did before 92. It is, to, for me, I don't think it's recommended to do that now unless it's in the book, which I don't think they even have it in the book anymore because this was a long time ago what they did. And what does it say? In the secretary's message on the signature page of the passport book. So if you have an old one that still has this, you can do it. You can you can do it. So we now know 08 all and 09 all reflect who we are as a private natural person who still has to wear this smock or the mask of a 14th Amendment U.S. citizen or a legal entity. A legal entity with a private side so that we stand out. We're VIP. We now know the code. And we now we will, now we know the codes. We now know the word wording that it said what? What did it say in there again? Let's go back. Let's go back real quick, like. You must, you, you must use. They have to be specific because if it's just the agent, it'll say the agent. You as the agent, the authorized agent only. It says you must use the standard wording given for each endorsement. Okay, so you. So if you print this up correctly and you use it correctly in the book, you can put it in there. Um, can you use a natural? Yeah, yes, you can use that. If you have a naturalization certificate, you can use that instead of. Uh, I thought the U.S. national is the same thing as U.S. citizen. Mm, well, they're trying to use the term U.S. national, mean born in Washington, D.C., um, but... Not all of their paperwork has uh, got the same, not all of the systems are jiving, okay? Different departments, different things, and they haven't updated all of their terminology across the board everywhere they, they have and can. The system takes time to change. So that's why they refer to us as non-citizen U.S. nationals. A person born in Washington, D.C. is a U.S. citizen, but you can also be a national of Washington, D.C. So don't get all confused. Just focus on what we got here. Okay. So Washington, D.C., U.S. citizen, unless you use the all caps name. National or non-citizen national refers to us, which are also state citizens. That's all you got to use. Okay. All right. So now back to the DS-11. All right. So now we know here, 08 all, 09 all. This is the only spot I would check or do any, or not even check, I would do anything with. I put the two codes here. Let them write in regular so they don't freak out. If you want to freak them out, that's up to you. I'm not condoning it. I would just leave that. They already know. Right, regular. Because you know what? They call us dumb and stupid. Oh, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know which one they need. It's not like there's a guru out there, you know, telling them. And I'm not a guru. I'm just saying. Um, But yeah, it does not say we cannot mark there. And we know that we need a regular. So if you're feeling ballsy, not that I recommend it, you can put regular in there. But, you know, make sure it's clearly legible and says regular. All right. But I personally would say, leave it blank. Let them do it. Let the baby have the bottle. But you want to make sure your codes are 08 and 09 all here. Expiration. Leave it blank. Let them look up the codes if they want to. Now, I believe I put not applicable for no expiration date. But here's the thing. We don't know fully if the expiration date is supposed to be the, the 10 years on how good it is. it lasts for. So I would leave this blank. Let them put in the information here, the information here, 
And they shouldn't be checking off any of that unless you're especially one of those. Only focus on this right here. That is it. That is the full passport process. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all these years of supporting and all that information. So now you guys know how to do the passport fully as a state citizen. Matter of fact, Colonel Vaughn Wilson of Copper Moonshine Steels, go check out his uh, website. He sends people my way. He does, And don't ask him a whole bunch of questions. He does not like it. That's how we met. <laughs> I got yelled at. And now we're best friends. <laughs> All right. So now you guys know everything I know about the passport process. There's nothing hid. Um, <laughs> Rosewater says, let the baby have the bottle. Yep. Let the baby have their bottle. All right. They're going to whine and cry. We know what it is. So when I was, when I was doing mine, the lady was like, Baby, how do you know all this? You must really. I was like, ma'am, I was like, I contacted the Department of State Travel, Department of State. They told me this is what it is. And it's true. I do call them. They don't really like me answer, asking certain questions, but I've got the right to ask. And if you do a FOIA, you're going to get all the information. Well, nah, not all the information. You're going to get what they believe the average person shouldn't just have but you have the right because anything that's a public office we have rights to it because they're doing it with our money they are the trustees we are the bo their bosses in private capacity so um we already uh Jar Jar, we already talked about the stars like i said nobody knows specifically i was told by them that the information Concerning those is considered national security, and so nobody will ever be told that information. So we can only speculate and give a good hypothesis. But I guess that in itself just disproves people's thoughts out there that they don't mean anything because they said it's it's national security. So they do mean something. I would have to believe they mean something, but do we know officially? Do we have a printout? No, because they're not going to give that to you. They straight up said, nope. We don't do that. You can try to FOIA, but it ain't going to work. Whatever whatever is behind each one of those is their internal, private, completely stuff. You cannot find, there is nothing you will find on the internet at all on the full breakdown of that. You will not. And if you do get your hands on something, I don't want to know. <laughs> I'm telling you straight up right now. I don't want it. Don't want it. Mentally. It would be nice, but I don't want it. Nope. I only deal with stuff that we can find on the internet that can be proven as fact. All right. So do not dishonor anything. Do not dishonor yourself. Always walk in the light and as a non-belligerent, non-combatant. Now, so that's the party, guys. We have it all done. That is all you need. The full process. Now, am I being anal about it? Sure. But if you want to know, this is the full gamut. Uh, at the Bad Wolf in the chat, has anybody ever gotten a state system passport in less than 14 days? Urgent. Yep. You can get one in uh, 45 minutes. Boom. Yeah. Did y'all know that? You should know that if you watch the VIP or some other videos. How do you get it in 45 minutes? Well. You go to the processing center. You have everything done and ready to go. You find the closest processing center in your area. There's like four of them across the United States. You call first. You walk in and you tell them, uh, I am a secured party creditor. Okay? I'm a secured party creditor. It's also something you can add into your... Uh, uh, explanatory statement. Now here, so check it out. You can also get an emergency one as well. Now you'll probably only get a card. If you need a book, you're definitely going to have to call them and tell them I have an emergency. You're going to have to prove it. 
And then you can go in there and get one in less than 14 days. And can you use a private mailbox for the process? Yes, only on one of the sections. You can only use it in one of the sections. You cannot use both. Now, we've got some wolves out there in Washington State. Okay. And at first, they were given a hard time about getting their passports done as a state citizen. Oh, how do you do that? Oh, how did you know to do that? You can't do that. <laughs> and the guy calmly, who's one of my students, who then formed his own group. That's why we call you guys the wolves. I can't be everywhere. That guy formed his own group out there of wolves. Now, whatever they really call their, their pack or whatever, I don't know. But he he's like, well, hey, wolf, I'm one of your wolves out here. Okay. He created his own group of followers and people out there, their own Facebook, um, uh, Washington Wolf Pack or Washington National, uh, whatever. They went in there as non belligerents, non combatants. They didn't argue, they didn't yell. When they got problems at the counter, they asked for a manager or the post uh, postmaster. Guy came out. He says, hey, uh, how can I help you? Heard you having a problem. He's like, well, I just want to let you know that I am a private person I want to, or I, I am a secured party creditor and I want to speak to you in your private capacity or privately. Guy said, oh, OK. So he knew what it was. He then said, we want our passports done as private citizens. We have everything ready to go. So the guy looked over the information. He says, yep, I can't fault you for the information. I'm sorry you had a problem with my, my desk person. We'll take care of that. Have a good day. The next time they came in, they had a whole line of people. The guy's whole crew came in there, and they had a separate section just for secured party creditor private citizens. They came in and said, hey, um, I'm a secured party. The guy behind the counter said, yep, we already know that line. That's how you guys make changes in America. That's how you get it done. Non-belligerent, non-combatants. Now you know how to do commerce. Now watch. You guys are going to hear a lot of people start using these key words. Vet. And how to do commerce properly. Because what is all this we're doing? We're doing commerce. We're doing commerce, but we now we know how to do it the right way. We didn't know how to do it the right way. And that's with a lot of these other things, okay? Change begins with all of us. Yep. Oh, there's one in Colorado, an, an agency? Okay. I did not know that about that one. I know it's like four, maybe five. I know there's one in Chicago, PA, now Colorado, one down in Georgia. I've seen somebody talking about the do not detain list again. All right. So the do not detain list is when you do the passport right and you get three or four or five stars. The do not detain does not put you above the law. It merely means that you're operating privately as a private person or you're mixing the jurisdictions with a three star. We think that's what it's, it's our it's our guess. Our best guesstimation, you are not above the law, but you are you have your back operating under the Constitution for the United States of America. You're saying that's how I roll. This is who I am behind the mask. All right. So and I've heard dumb people out there going, oh, I'm going to speed. I'm going to go onto a military base. I'm going to sell drugs with my do not detain. That is not how it works. I don't know whose stuff you're watching. That is not how it works. And those people are doing some time for that kind of stuff. All right. That does not, that is not how it works at all. Get that out of your heads. Whoever told you guys that dumb stuff or figured, well, hey, bro, if I'm about to do that today list, I think I can sell some weed over here. And these cops can't do nothing. I'm just going to show them the passport. Woo! Man, I get, no, no. That's not how it works. That is not how it works. You think the government would just be like, here, you can do whatever you want card? No. 
No, you'd have to go to the Department of State and let them know who and what you're doing and see if they approve it privately. Okay. And then maybe they'll issue you a, a special something, something, but no, that is not how it works. That's why I tell people I do not take responsibility for how you use this information or what you do with it because you got people out there who want to shortcut my processes that took me X amount of years to figure out that work. And then it's like having a perfect wheel. And then they're like, let me cut off some of that. Lunk, lunk, lunk. Well, uh, it still works. I did it my way. Great. Cool. Awesome. Then don't complain if you get into trouble and do whatever. Because that's not what we're, we're here for. Martin. Martin. You know. Mm -mm. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. It means a lot. Don't forget to get those bell likes and subscribes up. You guys can always send a couple bucks. They have your name highlighted here. And to help the wolf out if you so desire. Yeah, uh, Passport Agency in Seattle, Washington. There you go. All right, so that is the passport process, guys. You guys, now you can go out and look up um, 8FAM at 505.2 for passports endorsements. They just updated it last year. Now you can read it for yourselves. And now, as my cousin Knowledge Well Media says, uh, you are set free, or you are made free. Set free, made free. That's up to you. How are you going to look at it? Made and set free at the same time. Same time, man. Same time. I don't know you. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. Have I ever heard of the Black Passport? Yep, we just talked about that. Yep, 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 yep. Now, do they have anything above this or better? Probably. But are they going to show it? Are they going to give it to us? Are they going to put it on the internet anywhere for us to find it? No, because who would? So remember, if you've created your own micronation or you belong to a church thing or whatever else, um, you can apply to the Department of State, contact them, let them know, and maybe you can get a private uh, or special uh, diplomatic passport. But you got to talk to them. You got to register who and what you are with them. And no, you're, you're allowed to, you're good. You're good. No worries. I just happen to see it. That's on me. I'm going back through, uh, you know, stuff. If I choose it and I know I already talked about it, I'll talk about it again. If I choose this, you're good. Don't trip. Uh, Wolf, the Morpheus of the Matrix. You know what? My nickname years ago was Morpheus. Cause I'd always be like, do you think that's air you're breathing now? Do you think your physical body has anything to do with your uh, abilities in this digital realm? Show me. I know Kung Fu. Show me. Ah, I love Morpheus. But that was a lifetime ago. Now I'm known as the wolf. So. All right. Yep. Copper moonshine stills. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. They got fire information. That Now, some of the information, there's, if you want to learn more about the do not detain and how to deal with, you know, some issues, things, check out Copper Moonshine Steals. Buy a, buy a moonshine. If you don't have any use for it, give it as a gift. Um, but on the left-hand side, slide down, you'll see the do not detain process. Uh, do not, yeah, do not detain passport, blah, blah, blah. You can read all of his information. Um, I have some of it up on Black Site 32, with his permission, of course. Um, and so you can find it on mine. You can find it on his. Uh, mine is probably a little bit more updated. But for the experience, go to that man's site. Check out the stuff. It it means a lot because I tell him that I send people his way. And he's like, yeah, I can tell by the numbers. Um, something's going on. So I see somebody says they're a citizen of Ladonia. Okay. I am, just so you know, I'm going to do a video, another video on Ladonia. And um 
they are asking me to, I might be a, uh, a counselor here for them. So not just a citizen, but actually a diplomatic counselor for them. We're still in talks, um, but uh, it's been a long time to get, to get to that point. So wish me luck. Wish me positive energy. If I make that video on Ladonia, I care, apparently the queen of Ladonia knows who I am. So thank you, queen. Long live the queen. And then long live my queen. Um, it's a crazy butt. Um, but uh, I seen somebody talking about, um, somebody says, hey, you look like Morpheus. <laughs> when I shave my hair, I definitely do. Um, I have the whole suit somewhere here, the tie, the glasses that just clip here. I have the whole thing. Um, yeah, would love more info on child support. That would have to be either in a private setting, a consultation, a private seminar. Um, because uh, what we just provide information, um, anything associated with that here, kind of a conflict of things because they have an agreement. And so some things are considered legal, some are lawful. So uh, we can talk about that in a consultation, seminar, or, you know, something like that. Peter, good question. I did not see his question. Mike says, facts to the wolf. Yes. Josh says, good night. Good night, bro. All right, Josh, take care. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, for child support uh, on blacksite32.com, depending on what you're trying. See, I don't know what you what you, what you you guys mean by child support. You're trying to get off. You're trying to reduce it. You're trying to, uh, you know, get on it. You, you know, I mean, you're, you're trying to put your baby daddy on there, your baby mama. Just child support. There's a lot we could cover. So that would be a completely different video. Um, but we have an info pack on how to challenge certain aspects of that contractual obligation for educational information only on blacksite32.com. All right. What if my spouse refuses to correct their status? Does that affect me? Nope, not at all. Not at all. See, you are, we're really not correcting our, let me say this correctly. You already have your status. And if she's born here, then she already has her status. If you married her, like it says here, your spouse, if you've had a legal marriage, she gets your status if she's from another country anyway. So she already has it. So she can, she can go, I'm not doing that crazy stuff because I don't know. I don't trust that man on the box with the black. He seems crazy anyway. You crazy as hell too if you don't listen to him. It's because we're groomed to not understand or knowing this information. But she already has her status. She is a national as well. She's a state citizen. She just doesn't know it. She's never used it and probably never will. But you can use yours all day long. Won't affect you, won't affect, or won't affect her if she don't change. She already has it. Matter of fact, she is the perfect U.S. citizen. Mwah. It goes, if you're happy in the cage and doing what you're doing, your life, this isn't for everybody. This information is not for it's 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 for everybody but it's not for everybody to use or to do. If you are happy where you are, clap your hands, stay inside the cage. I'm safe in here with all my, my benefits and privileges and licenses. I don't care about that uh, state citizen stuff, that national stuff, me being their boss, man, Philly. And that's totally fine. And on that, I'm being serious. I'm having a little fun. We're not here to change everybody's thing. 1% of the United States of America knows who and what they are. Okay? This comes from the Department of State. They said they now have, what, 3 million people who've changed their status into being a state citizen. Okay? Now, that information came uh, from a mutual friend. And that person apparently has works in the Department of State for the travel passport department. And I trust my source and I know that that source trusts his. So that's it. You know, so people are waking up and they're making the change. Do you have to? Nope. So, yeah, if if the if the, the now here's the thing. So your child is awarded the state. So then let the state pay for the child support. There's a lot of information in there. He's, he's right. The only thing, the only hang up you have to worry about, depending on how you want to move, is that then 
if they think that you're not doing something right with your child, including the jab or whatever else, they will come and do it because you're receiving the benefits. But if you want the state to pay for it, they're the ones who created it. So they should be the ones to pay. <laughs> so uh, somebody said, what was that? Oh, the bird cage, <laughs> rose water. <laughs> I'm just saying, hey, if you like the bars, stay your butt in, you know, stay your butt inside. Don't come out to play. But when you see us flying, see one of my um, my past best friends, business manager, whatever, uh, God rest his soul, uh, Abraham. He always told me, he goes, he goes, James, if you hang with the turkeys, you can't soar with the eagles. Because the turkeys will keep you grounded. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to fly. A turkey, or a, excuse me, an eagle will hang out with the turkey so long it'll forget it can fly. So you decide where you want to be. You can hang with the turkeys. Just don't forget you can fly. So speaking of hanging out with people, if you are hanging out with turkeys, okay, a, you know, it's okay to be amongst them, but take time for yourself. Take time to be with your loved ones, your friends and family, the ones who are really there for you. Because at the end of this story, you're going to look back and you might have hung out with a lot of turkeys and had a lot of good times and memories, but it's going to be your loved ones who will be in your eyesight when everything goes black, the lights go out. Okay? So don't forget that. I'm telling you this because I spent a lot of time in bars and nightclubs and helping a lot of people who didn't appreciate me, didn't didn't kick in, in on anything, when I could have been spending that time with um, a lot of other family members, especially those who passed away from cancer and whatever else. Don't suddenly start jumping on the bandwagon because you find someone's dying or cancer. Keep that same energy up. If you don't want to spend with you know, time now with them, don't spend it right quick because they're on the last bit. Keep that same energy up, player. If you didn't come and see me uh, when I was, you know, young and doing this and moving around and I'm 150 years old, don't come and see me. I'm cool. Don't worry about it. Let's keep it real. Keep that same energy. Keep that same strength up. Keep that momentum up. Keep it all up. Stay over there. Don't. You know, that's what I'm saying. So, all right. So that's the passport process, guys. I can't believe we still have about 170 people. We're at three hours, um, just under. We are going to run it for another, what? You know what? I think the record is three hours and, what is it? Let's go see. Let's go see how long we've, uh, can we do that? Do we have the technology? Oh, you know what? I'm already in it. I can't go and check right now because I'm in it. I think we're like three hours and 30 minutes. So we will run it for at least another 30 minutes. And then uh, we'll call it. Now, if we get to 340, I think 340 is, is the um, is the max we've done. All right. No, uh, no, no, don't worry. It's it's You can always find my lives if you go to the main YouTube channel. Now, remember, guys, they do sometimes channel ban the information. So if you want to see all of my videos, before you ask me a question, go to youtube.com forward slash at symbol the bad wolf or forward slash james c lovett any of those will take you to the same spot once you get there use the lower search bar to let me get it right right there to search for specific things to also Find the lives. There's a, a tab that says lives. All my lives are always uploaded right there. And yes, uh, I, someone said, can you do this at the post office? Yes, you can do this at the post office. That's usually where I do mine. Um, you can, if you scroll all the way down, there'll be a little tab where it, when it stops. The little tab says view more videos. Click it. It'll open up all 800 videos. Or at the playlist where it says full video list. 
click it. 800 plus videos, all right there. Or you can search through all of the videos by typing right to travel or this, that, or the other. Hell yeah, we've been doing this for years now. We're still rocking. We've been doing this for years. We're still doing it. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, you can get that. You, if you have your driver's license, you can get an international driver's permit while you have that. And yeah, you can use that instead of a state license. Yep. Uh, please repeat the passport again. Uh, for what, another six hours? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I got to sleep. I got a whole bunch of stuff to do tomorrow. Um, but there's numerous, I think this is the third. Yeah, this is the third passport video. But this one, this one has all of the information. Everything whatso whatsoever we've learned from day one. I literally pretty much can't think of anything more to add. We came, we found new information. So it's all here. Yep. Art of success. Yes. In the old days, um, military guys would marry these uh, Asian ladies and bring them back home because they would get married to them. Now, that's the old school way of doing it. And as far as I know, ain't none of those things ever been taken all out of uh, the Constitution as far as rights, your Bill of Rights. So it stands as fact. Uh, Patrick Paul Devine. Or maybe you guys are talking about something else. Mm, yeah. Um, Russell J. Gould got his information from um, uh, 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 um, what is his name? David Wynn Miller. David Wynn Miller is the one who uh, really came up with all that stuff. Uh, what is the VIP Wolf Pack? Um, well, the VIP Wolf Pack is for those people who want to join. It's optional, but you can go to uh, youtube.com forward slash James C. Lovett. Once you're on there, you can click join. And for any dollar amount, per month as support for me and a thank you is that anything I talk about that I don't put on here is talked about on there. Or if I'm going to release something months ahead of time, I put it in the VIP section. So, and here's the thing, I'm not going to nickel and dime people. So the cheapest one is $1.99. You know what I mean? Like I make a dollar off of it, you know, at, at you know, at, at most. So it's about the appreciation and it supports me to continue to do this. And um, it ain't going to break the bank with anybody. But here's the thing. I'm not going to nickel and dime you. So if you choose the $1.99 or the $24.99, and I've got people on all of them. So thank you for everybody who's already in there. You get all of the information. I Whatever's in there, all the videos, all the commentary, the community section, all that. Um, you can leave comments you know, and all those things in there. So that's where I have all that stuff open. So um, that that's where you get the good stuff. Now, blacksite32.com, we now have a mailing list. You can join up for the mailing list. We've made tons, I mean, tons. I've been busting my hump, okay? You don't get the dark eyes, uh, staying up late nights, doing all this stuff. So I made it better for all of you guys. It was already fire. Now it's, it's, it's liquid hot magma. Mini me, do you want liquid hot magma? So the free doc page now has like 80 some odd files on there. Free. Your health and your health affidavits. People who are keeping their, during the pandemic, people who are getting challenged. You have to take the jab. You have to do this. You have to do that. Not the people who got the uh, health packet. Now it's free and a whole bunch of other ones on blacksite32.com. We just had over 200,000 uh, people come through. So we're going to do a mailing list. If you want to join up for that, just go right on there. You want discounts on Uber Eats. You want to get the merchandise. 
whatever it is, it's all on there. The files are now automated. When you buy files, you go right to BlackSite32 and you place your order and you get a link to download them just like that. You no longer have to worry, wait for me for a day, 24 hours, 36 hours over the weekend. You go and buy it. You get the link. It's done. Okay. I told you all we're going to do here is keep getting better. So now it's easy. Now it's a hope, man. It takes off so much work. All right. Shot goes out to Tammy. Tammy, appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I keep it real around here. You know what I mean? People go, ah, they only sent 99 cents. Well, that's 99 cents that this person, Tammy, decided to share with me that they didn't have to. That 99 cents adds up to other people sending me 99 cents. And it's your hard-earned money. Okay? So I, I appreciate that. I get excited when I find change on the ground. So, hell yeah, I'll take a dollar. I found a dollar. I found a dollar. I found a dollar. Hey, 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 hey. Because you know what? If everybody out there who watches me, which is subscribed, is 40, 44,000 right now. So hats off to that. And another 35,000, so almost 80,000 people out there watch this all together, which means that if everybody sent me a dollar, I'd have $80,000 roughly. That's fire. Okay. So I will take 99 cents because that's how I get there. One step at a time, my good man, one step at a time. Um, did I find anything else about creating your own ID? Yeah, there's no law that says you can't create your own ID. I still have the machine, but uh, financially, I could not charge you guys to make your IDs. It wouldn't. It. It. I would. I wouldn't feel right providing that service, knowing that you guys can just type in, uh, create my own ID online and making it for less than five or 10 bucks. I'd have to charge more than that for it to be worth my while to mail it out and to replace the things and the ink and all that stuff. Meh. Just go online and create your own, put your own codes in there. We give you guys all the codes and the names and everything else here. Create your own. Create, literally create, like I would create mine, um, Lovitica Private Citizen. My name, I wouldn't put my address on there. I'd put Private Nation. I wouldn't put the zip code on there. I would, you know, if you want to put USA, cool, United States of America, uh, state citizen. There's no law that says you can't have a private ID at all. So I wouldn't want to, uh, DD, double D. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any more information on signatures as promissory notes? Your signature is credit. That's why they always ask you for your signature. Signature is credit and it's permission. Sometimes it's permission to use your credit. <laughs> so there is power in your signature. That's why some people will put UCC 1-308. Or they'll sign, or they'll sign it also, or with, or or individually, with non-negotiable. They don't like that. Why? Because non-negotiable means they can't monetize it behind your back. You want to see somebody lose their 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 soup? <laughs> All right. Oh, you said five dollars on my cash app. Thank you much. Much love. Much love. Okay, it is in Georgia. So there's a passport agency in Georgia. I was like, yeah, that's pretty sure. You guys got to remember, not only do I have like 900 some odd videos of my personal experiences, and that's what I'm bringing you guys, education from my personal experiences to you guys, but I got a good chunk of these. I don't even know. I forgot what the count is. Um, I don't know. It's probably a couple hundred books. Uh, and I don't have all of them. I won't lie until you have all of them. I haven't done all of them, but a lot. So... I do get a little fuzzy on some things. I don't use a whole lot. All right. So uh, Richard says, food for thought. The Civil Rights Act of 1866 is fire info. All right. I'll bring it up. We'll look at it later.
It looks like there's a couple of them. Looks like there's a 91, 64, 1964, 1870. But yeah, all right, I'll check that one out. Looks like they probably updated, but okay, cool, cool. Check it out. Someone says you need an SMS marketing list. Um, yeah, maybe in the future. Like I said, I never intended for this to even be where it is. I just wanted to make a couple of videos and jump back into the private. But um appreciate your moment. Yeah, you can join that one. Um, for other other things, you guys can read the banners down here. Um, I'm also on Patreon under James C. Lovett. I don't have any videos up, um, but I'm also on Rumble. We've got a number of videos on Rumble, but YouTube has the majority. Also, I'm on um, YouTube. My backup channel is uh, The Bad Wolf Media. All right, somebody is going to bed. Sorry. Always take time for your loved ones and family members. Always comes first and your health and God or whatever you believe in. Somebody snuck in on my live. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's see. Oh, I got some text message. Uh, I think that's it's my boy, Fearless Floyd. I'm trying to see what I'm up to. I'm in the middle of a live, Floyd. <laughs> Otherwise, I would join you on what you got going on over there. So for those people who want um, information like trusts and one of the guys who's on the inside who runs with me, that is Fearless Floyd. You can find him at The Fearless Floyd Show. He does one every day, which is way more energy for me than I have, um, but uh, he's got lots of good stuff. So Big John says, where can I find this Ladonia? Ladonia is actually a micronation located over in Sweden. They are recognized by some of the big boys, which is huge. Anybody can be a citizen of Ladonia. You can literally have dual and triple citizenship with Ladonia. I think it's .org, right? I think it's .org. Let me double check before I speak. Ladonia, micronation.org. Yep. Okay. So I'm a member of there and I might be a counselor for them. Um, if you want a title of nobility, long live the queen of Ladonia, by the way. Um, you for I think it's like 20, 20 or 25 bucks, they can add the title Lord to your name or Sir or whatever else they got going on. It's pretty cool. We got a new member, Monica. Hello to Monica. Thank you for joining. Appreciate you. So uh, once your birth certificate is registered with the Department of State, so you know, I'll be honest, I've never seen anything where they said they they are registering it, but because we are giving it to them and they're giving us giving us it back, it's supposed to be that they're just they they need proof. So it's in their system. So I guess you could say it's registered, but it's a little bit different when the state registers your certificate of live birth. They're then returning you a birth certificate. So there's a little bit of difference there. So I don't think that's what they're doing because we're not getting anything like that back. We're getting something that proves who we are. And they're saying, well, here's your ID proving all this stuff to be right. So can you apply for a different social security number? Well, some people do that. If fraud has happened, they can issue you a new one. I tell people, I don't even know why you'd want really a new a new social security number. What you want is either a foreign or domestic EIN that you can use as an employer instead of an employee like the social security. So uh, why praise the so-called royalty queen who rules slave citizens? No, we're not talking about the uh, British... King, Queen of England. We're talking about Ladonia. And actually, these people are for the people. These are some of the nicest people 
and uh, they treat everybody good. They're a micro nation who does everything different than the Queen of England. They treat people with respect and they don't look at them as slaves and, and citizens like that. Sure, they go by the t name citizen or private members, but uh, it's not it's not the way you know you might be taking it. So yeah, I'm, I didn't. Not, and when I jokingly say in my other videos, "Long live the Queen," um, well, she's she's gone now. So awkward. But um, you know, also the thing too is when you're in the public. How you feel in the private is different than what you say in the public. So don't make enemies. We're doing business here. Some of you guys aren't used to thinking on multi dimensions. Okay. You got to think, you got to, this is business. If you want to do business with uh, some company or whatever, you don't bad mouth the company, at least not in the public. What's up, James? Smartest private citizen on the planet. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> Uh, I am definitely not the smartest. I am definitely not. Uh, there are people with IQ so high compared to mine. Um, it is not even funny. The problem is, is most of those people, here's the difference. I have a high IQ, yes, but the smartest ones don't interface with anybody. That's my problem with them. That's one of the reasons why I don't interface with half of them. Some of the ones who've watched my stuff and have talked to me in the private and have given me lots of private information and some public, um, they're awesome. But a majority of them who are especially wealthy, they're not trying to share what they do on the top half of the pyramid with us on the bottom or us upper middle. <laughs> Rest of the towing. Um, okay, so real, put your vehicle in a trust. Close out everything. Close out everything. The driver's license, give that back and fill out the proper form for just the driver's license by itself. Give back the driver's license plate and use a specific revocation form for that. They will still have your information in the system. So what do you have to do? You sell the vehicle to your private trust. This is the information we were missing before. Sell the vehicle to your private trust. Keep a copy of that in your vehicle. Go to the DMV's website and sell it on their website or go to the um, local DMV, get the proper form to sell the vehicle. Give it, take a copy, one for you, a copy for them. Now they've got a copy to update their records. Now your vehicle's private, okay? This is the part we were all missing in right to travel. I just got mine in, to be honest, because, you know, I was operating everything else I had done, but that was the piece I missed. And FYI, we'll just say this. If they're harassing you because your name is still in the system, your legal name, maybe you should have identification with your private name. I'm just saying, if you're going to operate private, go all the way private. Yeah, most people have are doing um, right to travel successfully, privately, peacefully, and they're good. The one piece we miss is transferring it into a private trust, keeping a copy of that, and updating our records with the DMV. And really, if you want to go extra mile, your DMV really should be um, records address should be updated to a post office or a virtual or a um, um, general delivery if you're going to be doing right to travel. Uh, I'm actually a Baron of Ladonia. All right. All right, Jason or Baron Jason. <laughs> That's awesome. Martin says, I could drive to Ladonia. Well, if, unless you're really close or your car goes over water or you're rich, you got one of them water plane car things. I don't know. Unless you are in Sweden, which is cool. Yeah, um, that would be great. Since my last name is Baltimore, I would add Lord. Yeah, you can you can literally be Lord uh, Baltimore, Lord Jerry Baltimore of Ladonia. 
make an ID based on that. Now you've got a whole another private thing going on. But remember, guys, no matter if you're white or black or what you look like or what they say you are, you're not. Unless you're born in Washington, D.C., then your first rights are to a 14th Amendment U.S. citizen, which is that name is a business trust. It's a state created trust to operate as a 14th Amendment U.S. citizen. They didn't free the slaves. They converted the terminology and they gave you a slave number. Private natural born pe persons do not have a number. Your name is in all lowercase lettering, unless it's a title of nobility. Okay, so you are all Native Americans, even Jerry right here or right here. Jerry is a Native American. Jerry was born probably in America in one of the 50 Republic states. His Native American name is, should be Jerry, whatever his middle name is, we'll just say Jerry Smith. So Jerry Smith of the Baltimore family, of the Baltimore nation, the nation of Baltimore, the house of Baltimore. The Baltimore Legacy, the Castle of Baltimore. Those are all of your Native American names in the, in the private. Now, he can make it whatever he wants to on the private side, his faith name, ecclesiastic name, whatever. And you start getting things made with that ID. Start changing over things around you to that, that thing. Now, remember, if you're not using the legal name, okay, if you're not using it, there are certain things that come along with using the legal name as being underneath that trust. That's why I tell people, don't get rid of everything, your social, and close it and give it back and all that stuff. Because there are some benefits and privileges, including certain things for discharge and whatever else that you can use with that name. Okay? Because those people have direct access to the trust. On the private side, we could do the same thing. We just don't know how to access the trust or to discharge things or any of that stuff. We don't know. They keep that stuff secret in-house. I don't even know where to go to begin to even ask for that information. In all honesty, the state, the state ain't going to tell you. Department, maybe. You know, I, I know a judge said, we don't know why you guys come to us to do all of these things, including bankruptcy. That's what a judge said. When you guys can do it all yourselves. Because we don't know how to do it. Right, right. Jojo, you are correct. That's that we do that. Talk about that in other, yeah, other in other videos. We've done that, but yeah, you are right. There was no full disclosure. And there's no signing. So their parties, their party, they're they are trustees. And what they're doing is they're bringing you in as a trustee and a ward. Okay. They're saying you get to be the ward over this lot you know, 90210, and you are a trustee, a business entity. Why? Because our parents applied for it and agreed to these things. Then they gave it to us and we didn't do our own due diligence to find out about what we, what we're using, what we have. And then we did it to our kids. That's the, that's the sick joke of it. So is it fraud? There is fraud there. But did we also do our own due diligence? Nope. Do we know how to do commerce properly across the board? Full spectrum? Nope. So let's see what else we got here. Wow, we still got 400 people. We lost about 70 because I know it's late night. So I'll, it is, it is. Well, yeah, Jojo, yeah, fraud is fraud, and you can claim it once you find it at any point in time. If you don't know fraud is there, then it's just good business. Like I said, don't get mad. I've had some people get butt hurt when I when one guy was like, well, my child support is fraud. Yeah, but you signed it, and you keep using it, and you've never contested it. Now it's fraud when you try to get out of it, and they won't let you. That's the real fraud part. Otherwise, we signed these things. We took ownership over them. We've been using them. And we never asked what it is. They don't have to up. They they do not have to show us the way out. They do not have to update us. Let us know. Hey, by the way, the contract you're in, it's fraud. Just but please don't say anything and please stay with me. Nope, it's good business in their jurisdiction, which is not America, even though it's right here. Okay, 
like a Muslim or a Moor, they're right here, but they're in their own jurisdiction. So we have to learn how to get out of their stuff. Let's see what we got here. Uh, 8 fam 502 505.2 is that there that it ends in purple belongs to or associated with the people or things previously mentioned earlier identified to entitled. So you're saying that because they have in 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 uh purple according to uh maritime color that when red represents the living man that the purple indicates uh royalty. That's an interesting thing. I didn't think of that. That could be, there could be something. So uh, once again, Joe, yeah, they, what they're doing legally, we know, we know what it is. Like I said, we know what it is from their perspective. Congress allows them to do what they're doing under the, uh, under the notion that whoever comes to them and applies for a driver's license and whatever else, it's business, meaning commerce. Now, where I consider to be straight out fraud is that we they allow our parents to get these things for us without full disclosure. So, yeah, is, is, does it trickle down that it's fraud? Yeah, because of that initially. But if we never challenge it or get rid of it, then they're just going to look at it as business. And the Supreme Court and the federal district courts, they know what's going on. And this is their words. If you are enjoying your driving privilege, it is not fraud and they will not help you as long as you are doing that. If you operate privately and you go to them and complain, then they will help you. No, they will not call it fraudulent identification. They, they will say foreign and sure, a cop won't like it if you have a private ID and you tell them what you know, they'll, they might say, oh, that's that's a fraudulent ID. How is it fraud? If I create it in the private, it's not fraud. This is who I am. Now, are there some places where they may not accept it? Yeah, because they're all, those are corporations and they have no, like, um, and like JoJo just said, boom, corporations have no jurisdiction except for over themselves. Uh, would you do that with the state recorder's office? I don't know which part you're talking about if you're talking to me, but <clears throat> it, it doesn't hurt to get it recorded. Jar Jar says, what's the simplest way to open up your own trust? Uh, I usually use Rocket Lawyer. Steps you through for free or 20 bucks. But if you want a professionally done one where, and there's nothing wrong with Rocket Lawyer, but if you want to be taught all the ins and outs, um. There's a, a lady by the name of Anne LaFleur. She uh, is on the Fearless Floyd show. She holds classes. And I believe Knowledge Well Media um, also holds classes. You can tell uh, Knowledge Well that uh, the Bad Wolf sent you. There's a discount that goes on there. I don't get anything, but it's to help you guys out. Uh, he does classes. Otherwise, yeah, Rocket Lawyer can do it. How do you get a, an ID for private use? Um, you literally go on Google and type in create a private ID online. Oh, Martin, you are in Sweden? Okay, nice. Well, I, I stand corrected. Uh, hello over the big pond. <laughs> uh, how do you feel about trust asset tag to put in your dashboard? I don't know. Yeah, Any, anywhere you can put that you're in a trust, that you can show it and prove it in your travel binder, heck yeah, use it. Matter of fact, I know I talked about this in one of the other videos, so I'm just going to bring it to you now because it's fire. So with my state, I went on their legislative website and download their information on right to travel. Here's what they, Here's what you have to look up, though, in your state. Uh, and Supreme Man, about time that these comments are open. Yeah, when I'm doing a live, when I can make sure that there aren't uh, trolls in here or agents, you know, whatever else, or in the VIP section. So, yeah, if I do a live, they're open. 
I just don't put them on there for people who put on the uh, P-O-R-N stuff, the adult stuff, the trolls and the haters on my other videos because it's not about that. And if people want to get together who are associated with me, then you go to uh, Telegram and you type in Bad Wolf Unincorporated and you can join the group there or create your own group or go on Facebook and join someone else's. So I just don't have time for the negative comments that people live up there. I'm not going to let them ruin uh, everybody trying to get ed uh, education. So that's how I roll. And you can, as Lisa say in the, my, when I was young, you can like it, love it, or leave it. Uh, yes. Void ab initio. Yep. You can use that too. That is also good. The baby act. Yep. I read that. Uh, what kind of trust is best for an automobile? Uh, just put it in your family trust. I would make mine, um, like love it, family, love it, family, private vehicle, private auto, no private conveyance trust or love it, private conveyance trust or family, love it, family, private conveyance trust, whatever you're going to call it. Just don't call it underneath your, your legal name. And then in the trust, you put your given name as the person who's the, the creator of it, the trustee, and then name somebody else as your beneficiary. All right, so the vehicle code, you have to look up registration, tax, and exemption on non-residents. I personally would tell you either to fill out your state's non-resident tax form or have an, an affidavit signed under jurat with the notary that says you are renouncing your residency uh, in within the state of whatever you're in. Doesn't mean you have to leave. Doesn't mean they can kick you out. It just means every time you use your old legal name, you're using it that way. You as a living person, you with your given name, are not a resident. They do not have your given name resident um, recorded with the state. So you're in the private capacity, your given name, you are not a resident. Okay? I would have that affidavit put in your binder. I would have these things put in your binder. These are also good things you can use if you get a ticket or bothered or whatever else. Have one copy in your vehicle, have which is your binder, and make two copies for your house. Or at least one master copy so you can make another copy. So let's look and see what it says. Exemption of non-residents and foreign registered vehicles. Except, except as to foreign-owned vehicles required. So unless you're a foreign owned vehicle and you've registered your stuff to them, you are a foreign one who's not required to register it. But if you do, you have to abide by their codes, your diplomatic or whatever else. Okay. And it says to be registered in the state. Yeah. If you're their property or you decide to no, no vehicle has to be recorded unless you are their citizen or their trust e or their employee or a member of the state you and the private are not with your given name they have no jurisdiction to tell you you cannot use the roads that are paid for by with our money privately unless you're using them to make money income okay because if you're here and you're using the roads our roads we the private americans need to be paid for that Okay, it says 1A, the vehicle carries a registration plate indicating, this is why we win court cases right here, people, indicating the vehicle is registered in the other jurisdiction. Foreign national, Royal Nation of Levitica. Okay. Done. And if they try to impede on that after I've closed out everything, then they get hit with a half a million dollar federal lawsuit. I don't know about you guys, but I can look pretty nice in half a million dollars. All right. The vehicle is owned by a non-resident. Well, I've got my trust document. I went to the Department of uh, Motor Vehicles and I have it uh, registered here that I'm transferring it to my trust. So number two, done. Number three, the jurisdiction in which the vehicle is registered allows vehicles that are registered in Wisconsin to be operated tax-free upon its highways. 
let me talk to the um, owner of um, Lovitica, that private nation. Hey, so owner of Levitica, uh, can Wisconsin, uh, may, you know, they just, they just want to know, or or Florida, or Maine, uh, Texas, uh, California, uh, Arkansas, Colorado, New Hampshire, can they not tax me? Why, yes. Okay. So, yeah, there you go. I declared myself to not be taxable in, my, in the private. Done. Next. Um. The vehicle is operated in accordance with the rules adopted by the secretary based on the gross weight of the vehicle. Well, I have a standard car and not a um, diesel, a big 18-wheeler uh, uh, semi. So, yeah, I'm good. Otherwise, that's a whole different thing. Can't help you there. Uh, Foreign-owned or operated vehicles entering the state to have special equipment. Nope, don't need any of that. So, there you go. I have satisfied all of those requirements. If the owner of the, any vehicle is exempt and you move to the state or if the vehicle has been purchased, nope, I'm not moving in. I'm not, no, when they say by move, you're registering it. Okay, I'm not moving into the state, not to your paper jurisdiction state. I can be in the area and still be private. Legally, you cannot force me to be a member of your state of because I have a domicile or property in the state that I use and 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 travel at my free will. You cannot, because why? When you didn't have this stuff, they asked you, they said, no, we can't give you a driver's license. We can't give you these things. You, you need proof of residency. You have to register with the state as a voter. My private name, James Charles of the Lovett family is not registered. So that using that is a non-resident. Okay, boom, there it is. Yahtzee. Okay, let's see what else we got here. What about electric bills and uh, water? Yeah, you can change those over to your given name. Yep. Uh, purple means royalty, yep. What is a divine trust? Uh, I believe that's God level, ecclesiastic type, where you're basically saying that your trust is in the jurisdiction of God or whatever supreme deity you put your faith in. It's it's a, technically it's the most superior claim because nothing nothing is above God. Everything so God created man, man created laws, laws then govern some men. So this is where we've been operating the bottom of the pyramid. So of course they can tell you what to do. In your private capacity, you are their boss. You you created everything that they're using. And the fact that they're still here is because we haven't kicked them out of the country. So we're their boss in private capacity, but not when we use their stuff. We go underneath them as a sub corp. Um, there's a lot of stuff. I can't get to all these guys. I just don't have the time, man. I'm getting tired. Uh, there's so many. Charger says name drop, but Yusuf L. Um, he spelled his name wrong. He's gonna, <laughs> but yeah, I know what you're talking about. He says a lot about mixing the public and private. Yeah, it's a problem. It's definitely a problem. That's what we're doing if we do right to travel. That's why people get called the sovereign word. Which, if you guys ever see anybody trying to clown me in one of the, my videos and they've got my logos and things up, report them for slander and defamation of character and all that other good stuff. If they're using it as just Positive criticism, talking about this. Remember, when you see those videos, it's because they're taking clips of my words and information and trying to clown me, okay, and other people. But they do it because then they can go, I'm going to put James Hulovit on there. He's old. he's crazy and this and that because it then gets them clicks, okay? We've already gotten uh, channels shut down for such defamation of character. So thank you in advance for those people who have done that or will. But, yeah, you cannot mix the public and the private. The public is for business and commerce for entities operating under a, a mask, a public transmitting utility. You guys don't seem to understand this part. It's 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 business and business is for the dead, dead entities under the Sesta K V Act um, of 1666. The private person are there are living. 
you don't mix the dead with the living. Do you guys hang out in the in the graveyards? You you know, I mean, maybe some of you guys do. I mean, I'm not knocking it. If you do, it's it's cool. Can you go over starting a micronation to try to look and find much? A micronation is nothing more than a PMA, a private members association. Okay, a 508C1A. Uh, we sell the pack on um, Black Site 32. Um, otherwise, look up private uh, members associations. Is there a step by step guide how to fill the password? Right? You got here late, didn't you, Miss Lady? Didn't you? You got here late. You got here late. I had this up for a whole week. We we're going to be doing it. No, it's all good. Go to blacksite32.com and click on the passport page. Moment, I want to be free. You are free now that you know what's going on and how to operate better in commerce. There's still more to learn. Um, but yeah, we can we can talk, we can figure out how to get some stuff done. Uh, recording your automobile to the state recorder's office along with private express trust uh, would do the same thing. Um, I can't speak for every state and how they move, but yeah, if if you record it, then they can't say that's not there. Get a re get if you record it with the recorder's office, you keep that. Everything you guys do to prove that you're not who they want to say you are, you keep in your binder. But I will say from personal experience, do not black black out everything in your binder. If you're doing proper right to travel, that has your address on there. They will try to use your address. They will try to use anything in your vehicle illegally and on definitely unlawfully to then use it in one of their databases to try to find anything to force you to contract. Okay. How would one add their UCC, their children to the UCC? Uh, you put their name down in all caps and put uh, their uh, uh, QCIP number or the registration number on there. Mm -hmm. that's, that's that square. Continue. Square. Um, there's a couple of different references to that. I'm not sure, but yep, CDL's commercial. It's C, it literally CDL stands for Commercial uh, Driver's License it's an acronym. Yep. So it's com it's commerce. The commerce of the C. Okay. Commerce. Current C. It's all about water. They're doing business on water. These are water rules and laws. Can you set up a trust with the treasury? That I don't know. I don't know that one. I don't, I'm not versed in everything, guys. I haven't had time to uh, to do all of it because nobody knows all of it. So I, I always promote people looking at other people's videos, but just be careful and research all of the information. What about an old collector 61 RV? You can use it private. Um, yeah, I don't know anything about Coach MT four thousand. I, I know he's in the Midwest, I think, or something like that. Um, I, I don't. I, I haven't had time to watch everybody's stuff. If I catch a video, if it pops up, and I think they know what they're talking about, I'll give them a chance. And if they're too aggressive or too buy everything I got, buy, 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 thousand dollars, hundred, you know, that's too much. Uh, you know. Yeah, dynastic trust. I've heard of those. I haven't looked into what their full meaning is behind that. But yeah, I have heard of uh, dynastic. Uh, let's see. Yep. Um, God, let's go back over here. Uh, someone says, I don't. I peeped him when he came out. Don't like him. He starts regurgitating what other people were saying. Yeah, you're going to find a lot of people. There's nothing wrong with, um, you know, gleaming some information from, from people. If that's what they want to do to build up their website. Plus, it does help as long as you're doing it correctly with full information to get the information out to wake people up if they choose to. Other than the one guy's wife who wants to stay a U.S. citizen. Totally fine. Um where can we find uh, Black Site 32? I'm telling you guys, you guys are asking questions. Go on, go on to blacksite32.com. Go to the free docs page. You got it all there. 
I'm so mad I'm late to this and you have been going for a while. Yeah, we're about to cross over three hours and we're going to try to go to at least five more minutes so we can have the longest video I've done for the passport process. Um, but think, yeah, go to um, uh, uh, youtube.com forward slash James C. Lovett or at the bad wolf and scroll down, hit the live tab and then click the live and it should be the first one on there right now. It should be literally live casting, maybe a couple second delay. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people. How do you change the utility names into the given name? Uh, on the back of most of your forms, it says, is there an update to address or your information? <laughs> I'm not I'm not laughing at you, but like it's it's it's, it's yeah, it's simple. It's not hard. They don't make it hard. Or call them up. I literally went on um, uh, the electric energy company's website and they say, do you want to rename your energy bill? So I put it in the name of the trust, put it in the name of my, my micronation, put it in the name of the my governmental entity. <laughs> the 98 is for a trust. The 98 num all, all these anything they associate with the with, with a number is a trust. It's not just the 98 trust. The social security number is a trust too. They're all the same things. They just make it sound different. It's one stack of numbers. And depending on which block you get, they might call it something different, but they're all trusts. They are all for corporations. Everything, everything that these people provide you is in the public. Everything, 98% of everything that they provide is all public. It's their stuff. It's in the public. And until we change some of it, can we get away with using some of it for our own uses? To be recognized that I'm in your, I'm in I'm in Pepsi, but I, and I'm wearing a Pepsi shirt, but I'm not a Pepsi employee. Do you understand me? Do you understand the words that come out of my mouth? There's a difference if I accept the all name, all caps name, and I tell and I and I check off I'm a U.S. citizen, and then I'm wearing a Pepsi shirt. I'm inside a Pepsi, and I work for Pepsi. I work for Pepsi. If I'm there, and I'm just have a Pepsi shirt on. And I sign in or autograph in and I check off national on the other, on that application or the whatever, the tour. Guess what? I'm in their, I'm in their area doing business, but I'm not a Pepsi employee. Thanks for the discounts with the inflation. Yeah, I only just recently slightly raised the prices. I discounted some things and I made some things free. I try to keep it real, guys. Like, you know, I got to keep my lights on. I tried to not monetize any of these videos. I tried to not um, charge much, if anything at all. But too many people ask me the same questions in the emails for free. I had to, I had to charge something for consultations. I had to, you know, people weren't sending in enough donations. That's not enough to keep the lights on, you know. So, yeah, I had to start monetizing. And But most of the videos... I only the top videos do I monetize. I do not monetize, not me, maybe YouTube. I don't know what they're doing with the videos. They have commercials and everything, but I only monetize the highest viewed ones. That way I can give you guys a break from some of that stuff when you watch the regular ones. Keep it real. YouTube also told me they want me to keep people talking for at least 15 or 20 minutes um, in order to promote. I kept all, I still keep most of my videos less than 10. I'm not here for money, but I, I needed to keep the lights on. And if not enough donations come in, brother's got to make his money. I could literally double my money right now if I monetize every video I have. I literally take a pay cut to do this. You know, if I want to get, I, this is all I do. When I started, I was working. This is all I do now. And, you know, this. So, are there tax exempt cards again from Department of State? Yep. Sam, I am. Yep. 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 But you're going to have to register. So we've been told from them that the passport card number can be used in most places when you've done your passport as a national state citizen, that that is an exempt number for many things. If you want a Department of State issued one, 
then you have to talk to them about and, and submit a micronation to them or a faith-based organization, I believe, as well. And then they can set you up with a specific one, tribal ID type, you know, uh, card and inf information, you know, for tax exempt purposes. Uh, Tony says, good night, fam. Thanks for the gems. Booking my consultation at AM. All right. Uh, yeah, whenever you guys, if you decide, if you need one, cool. Uh, just remember, I do get booked out, so I will get to you when I can. Um, it's, it's still a lot of work of getting on stuff. Um, everyone, everyone is tax exempt in the private. Yes, but you have to display that and they're not going to, nobody knows that everybody you're going to be doing business with. They don't know that. And they're going to say, well, we need something from the state. We need something from the government, but yes, you're right. Some people yet yeah, will operate as a 508 C1A, which is also that too. So we are at three hours 45 minutes. We're going to wrap this up in the next couple of minutes. So if you guys want to send your shout outs, I might answer one or two last questions. We, as far as I know, have beat the record as the longest one for us. So thank you guys for helping make that possible. Thank you, Tammy, uh, for your time as well. Uh, I have not done the W-4 sandwich process. Um, yes, uh, think I will be leaving the video up. I, I leave all the videos up, always. I don't take any of them down. Should you ever see a video not up anymore, it's because I was asked to take it down by somebody who was in it for their protection and reasons and privacy, or one of the corporations decided that they were going to not let it be up. Corrupted. Hey, what's going on? Let's see what we got here. Um, close that out. That one. All right. Whoa, whoa. Um, got lots of Um, lots of comments here. Thank you guys. I appreciate you. Yeah, I'm going to close it down. I got a full day of consults and I got some family stuff to take care of tomorrow. Um, so it's definitely going to be interesting day. So thank you for the support. Thank you for the prayers. Thank you for the appreciation. Um, comments, constructive criticisms, all that. Thank you guys. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, hmm. Next week's live is going to be fire just like this one. Why? Because we have a lady um, who is going to, who is a former IRS agent. I'm going to just, just, just go ahead. Breathe that in for a moment. Breathe that in. I'm going to look at some real quick. Y'all just breathe that in. A former IRS agent. Christopher Anthony, I appreciate you out there. Appreciate you. Art of success. Thank you. Big John, thank you. Um, there is an IRS agent who I've always wanted to meet. So this is going to be a huge thing. I'm going to try to not fangirl out real quick. Um, but they fought... And I, and I believe, and she'll be honest and admit this, that at the time she didn't know what was going on. And as an in, inside person, they busted her chops for, yep, Sherry Peel Jackson. Yes, Jedi, you're right. I was going to save the name, but you brought it up. I'll say it. Sherry Peel Jackson. I've always wanted to meet her. She's going to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! And we get to ask her anything we want to ask. Taxes, proper forms, about the 508, everything. Woo! I asked her, I said, is there anything that you want to keep off the table? So let me know. I'll avoid it. I won't, I'll tell people don't answer it. This and that. We'll, we'll say, nope, we, you know, nope. She's like, nope, nothing's off the table. She's going to talk about IRS. She's going to talk about health. She's going to talk about uh, faith. She's going to talk about forms, everything. 
George, I just caught yours. Thank you for coming. George says, I'm an old guy, been into stuff forever, and James teaches me stuff. I want to know at this time, and I really appreciate it. Thank you, George. I appreciate you. Um, I learn from people younger than me sometimes with little bits and pieces. I learn from people older than me. Um, Celestial says, Sherry, yeah. <laughs> She's going to be on the show. Like, the sh you guys have elevated me to the point where people are like, Oh, I know. Yeah, I've heard of you or I've seen that. And they're like, yeah, I'll definitely be on your show. So that is fire. Thank you guys for doing this. I will always stay humble. I will always stay appreciative of you guys. Uh, yeah, digital future. Oh, woo! Yeah. Uh, man, it speaks with a golden tongue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Sherry. Yeah, she knows. She she did time. They busted her. They they made an example out of her because she was one of them. So she's she's done some time on that. She dealt with these people. And uh, yeah, we're gonna ask her about the private side. We're gonna ask her about you know the whole Puerto Rico where that's the capital or not the capital but the headquarters for the IRS. Um... <laughs> if Elon Musk ever said I actually helped them. He better send me a mill because that man drops money all the time. But that would be hot. That's funny. <laughs> he made me laugh. Uh, pass it on. I mean, you know what? I'll be honest with you guys. You guys would be surprised who watches this. When I told you agents watch it, they do too. But I'm talking about everybody. I've had people in high orders, people in low orders, um, wealthy people, broke people. Uh I, I don't care about all that, you know, at the end of the day. Unless Elon Musk is really watching, then, bro, you owe me a million. Hook me up. I got to be a millionaire. I'm not leaving this planet until I get at least a million dollars in my, in my bank. All right? You got to do it. And then we can fly to the moon or something or Mars. I don't know. I'm down. Let's just let's see some stuff. I'll be like uh, Jim Kirk or James T. Kirk on um, on uh, Enterprise. Let's go. Let's meet some peoples. So, but yeah, Sherry, yeah, she will be on the show. And uh, we get to ask her, who is that? Hold on. I uh, almost missed it. Boom. Well, says, I'm a big fan of her. Okay. Yeah, she's going to be on the show. I I didn't know I had more people watching and subscribe to me than her, you know? So she was definitely like, hell yeah, I'll go on there and, and get the, you know, and, and our, our information lines right up. So it's perfect. And maybe one day she'll have me on her show. Maybe, maybe share it. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll drop that. Or maybe you guys should mention that in the, in the comments next week, Monday at the same bat time and channel. Say, Hey, Sherry, maybe, you know, would you ever have the wolf on your show? <laughs> I'm sure she probably will. Maybe if not, it's cool. You know, like I said, we just like the network because I guarantee you, a majority of her people have never heard of me. And a lot of my people have never heard of her. And there's no reason why we shouldn't share information. Uh, turd says Elon is a puppet. No more like the hood ornament or the Ronald McDonald. <laughs> uh, oh, you guys got so many comments just blasting through. You guys don't know what it looks like on my side. Chicago's in the house. Shy town. Jar Jar says, love your humor and lack of arrogance. And ego is very much appreciated. Refreshing Brussels. So, so many nuggets, uh, uh, setting people free. Love your bunch is mine. Jar Jar, I appreciate you too. That's what I'm talking about. That's that brother love right there. That's what I'm talking about. We don't need to fight or argue about nothing. You should never be arguing or fighting with anybody about nothing. Speak your peace and stay calm and non-belligerent, okay? Because usually if you have a problem, it's only because of a miscommunication, all right? I'm not trying to... I'm tr If I eat, is why we call ourselves the wolves or the bad wolf. If I eat, y'all eat. And if y'all eat, then break me off a little piece. And that's what we're doing here. I'm 63 years old. This is George again. Been studying this matter for 30 years, subject matter for 30 years, and I've done things nobody would believe. I come here for information. Thank you. Yeah, George, if you ever have some fire info that we can share, if you have something you want to keep for just me, hit me up. We can talk about that in private. I love knowing stuff that, you know, that's good. And uh, But if you have something really interesting and, you can, and it's vetted, you can stand on it, you know, I'll have you on the show. You know, we can do something. Or if you want to stay private, you just want to share something. Yeah, send it to me. We can talk about some stuff or I'll read it. 
and uh, put it in my, um, you know, Rolodex and maybe I'll make a show out of it. I ain't trying to fight with nobody. Not at all. That's why you don't hear me talking about other channels and other people on a negative way. Um, I know you are lost in a shout out to me. So thank you there. Um, I know my people over at Knifeback um, sent me a shout out. So thank you guys. Sometimes I don't hear them. So if you guys have heard of somebody out there who sends a shout out. Oh, what's the guy's name? Uh, I think it's on Facebook as uh, one stupid F. Uh, thank you. Uh, he uh, he follows me and he he puts stuff out there. So appreciate you. XXXXLU. Thank you for being a member. Uh, do you have membership on YouTube? Yes. You can go to my main page and click the blue and white join button. That's how you can join the membership. If you want the mail stuff, like when we, when I do digital mailing emails, um, that's on blacksite32.com. Yep, always stay in good character. Yep, as I eat, we eat. As we move, they move. So this is how we work together. Let's break off bread for each other. Stop all this fighting and arguing and hating and having a negative outlook on your mind. We are creators. We have God's spirit energy inside of us. We are living God. Smork, lowercase g. <laughs> See what I did there? Um, Pico. Pika, Pika, Pikachu. <laughs> Aloha. Was that Oa, Oa, Oahu? I don't want to mess it up. I know Aloha. Yeah, we all do pray for our enemies. I mean, I ain't gonna go out and necessarily have dinner with them, but I'll pray that they go through whatever they need. This is this is my phrase, guys. Okay, learn this phrase. I don't wish anybody harm or hurt. But man, do I want to. This is what you do. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Lord, I pray that that dirtbag son of a mm, cheating ex mm, goes through everything they need to go through to become a better person. And your in your name, Heavenly Father, so mode it be. Make it so. Don't wish them negative. Wish that they go through everything in life to make them a better person. That keeps your your karma clean. <laughs> yes. What's the color of your Bugatti? I got a Bugatti. I what? Let me know. I got a best. I got closest to a, a Bugatti is this little blue uh, plasma light. That's about the closest thing I got to a Bugatti. People ask me. I mean, I I do have a I have a Benz, but it's it's like an O2. It's old. Uh, but you know, it still looks nice. It's just starting to rust out a little bit. Like I, I ain't, I ain't making, uh, that kind of money. I ain't got no Bugatti unless, uh, Elon Musk or somebody else wants to give me some money. Now I know there's millionaires out there who watch this and nobody has sent me a hundred thousand dollars or 200, a quarter million, half a million or a million yet. Contact me privately and send it. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to work my way up. But if you just got it like that, show me the money. But um, thank you, uh, Sin City. Uh, oh, spiritually and for the information we put out, I'm worth way more than a million. I've been offered a million dollars by people who wanted to buy me out. Um, so karmically, energetically, I'm already a multimillionaire that way. But my bank account says you better travel somewhere within the, the next four states. <laughs> uh and pack light no no and, and, pa and pack a couple of lunches all right so oh man we're about to break four hours i wasn't even trying to do that so we're about to ring in four hours this is definitely the longest one thank you thank you thank you guys it is late now i'm tired i'm hungry I got a full day. I got to get up in a couple hours and start doing consultations and dealing with some family stuff. Uh, thank you for the prayers. Thank you for the positive energy, the positive thoughts you guys have sent my way. Thank you, universe, for bringing me all these wonderful people. And um, I pray for each and every one of you guys to whatever God you believe in to 
be there for you and may you be successful and healthy. What time is it now for me? It's 1130. So my eyes are getting tired. I can see it in the video. I need to eat, even though I know it's too, it shouldn't, well, you shouldn't eat really late, but uh, I always have like a light little meal before I go to sleep because I wake up hungry. A couple of um, vitamins. What do I take now? I think, um, oh, magnesium and potassium. And what's the, um, oh, there's one that's good for sleep. I'm not going to get up and go and look for it. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Uh, melatonin. Yeah. So Bad Wolf is so money and he doesn't even know it. Oh, thank you, brother. I mean, I, I mean, I know that like this is worth and I know I know I have a worth, but that whole cocky, I mean, you should have a, a good amount of um, self-worth, self, you know, appreciation, all that. But and zinc. OK, zinc, too. Yep. And selenium. OK, I think selenium. I got a multivitamin with that in it. Um, what does being cocky really do? The only times I've ever been cocky was when one of my friends was working as a waitress and a bar manager at a really upscale club. And this guy came in trying to trash her. Right trying to make her feel bad in front of his buddy. So I stepped in and I made him feel like, well, I just put him in his place properly, nicely, educationally. Okay. Other than that, why be cocky? I, I, I'm the person, if if you got to kill somebody, kill the killer. Okay. If, you, if, if somebody's out there being cocky, you know, let them be cocky. But if they're being cocky to you or yours, that's when you step up the game, you know? That's what you do. Other than that, it's just, you know, let it go. It's not your, don't even entertain that. Don't, don't give any energy, no power, no credit to things that don't serve you. Mike says, be careful with the uh, melatonin. It's hormone therapy. I usually, well, if I start growing boobs, <laughs> I usually only take two of them. I take small uh, amounts of it. Uh, just to kind of help, but yeah. So, all right, what do we got here? You're already in there. Somebody, somebody said, so people are like, yep, get rest. Thank you. Good night. Bless you. Bless you guys all too. Arms, raving hand. It's 11 in India, 11 a.m. Are you in India right now? And it's 11 a.m.? That's cool. <laughs> Can I become a national another way or then the passport other than the passport? Yeah. Um, blink three times. And you're a national. You don't need the card. You never needed. You never needed the card, Dorothy. You never needed the card. If that's the one last takeaway. Then uh, there you go. You've never needed the card. Autumn says, uh, you were born that way. You already have it. Healthy liver free from parasites. You know what I also take? I take um, diatomaceous earth for any parasites and things like that. They hate that stuff. And it does wonders for your skin and uh, wrinkles, crow's feet, elasticity in the joints. Um, I was seeing this one girl um, who probably hates my guts, but it is what it is. But she still takes... Um, diatomaceous earth and it's helped her and her back and and now she's promoting it to her other uh friends and family and whatnot yep don't feed into the negativity for show um let's see can i join the 33 you're talking about oh um yeah just email me hit, hit up privately i can show you how to get there it's not hard um, say no to the rainbow. <laughs> yeah, they're doing wild stuff. So a lot of people hear me and they're like, I heard you don't like this, this, and this. Well, my problem is, is that most of the stuff that they feed you is, look at the world. There's no way the whole world just got woke at the same time. They're feeding it to you. Any, any of, almost every one of their movements, they're providing you with a hero so that they can take them down at the end of the day. That's why I say I'm not a hero. I'm not a guru. I'm just a guy down the street sharing my enter my education and entertainment and personal experiences. Non-belligerent with the United States Corporation Treaty. Okay. 
So my whole thing is, is that if you're seeing it on TV, they're pushing an agenda. I have, I was raised by women. I love women, but do I like the whole, uh, you know, what they're doing? Some of it, yes, because I do like that they're knocking down stereo things, even the Black Lives things. There's some good things about it, but who's really behind it, and what is their ultimate agenda to give you what a hero to knock down later on, or to uh, confuse it, or to make us argue and fight? I don't care about any of those things. You guys want to be. If you want to be gay, straight, both, poly, X, whatever, who cares? Do it in the private. Don't put, but don't push whatever it is on me and my children or my family. Do what you want to do from the private, from the private side, operate in the public that way, but don't push any agendas on. No, nobody should have anything pushed on you. Okay. You have the right to, to not be marketed. To me, all that stuff is like commercials. I don't. Just leave me be. I don't want to see it. Um, is she doing a Q&A, the IRS agent? Well, she's former. She's former. She hates those people probably more than you guys ever will. They took four years of her life because they want to make an example out of her sharing the inside stuff. So she will be doing questions and answers. Um, yep. Yep. She's going to be here. So. That's, that's, yeah, we're on it. We got that covered. All right. So that being said, guys, um, that is it. We are at 400, 400, getting tired. Four hours, six seconds, or six minutes, getting tired. Thank you for being here this long. Um, this is a record for me, and it was fire. So thank you for all of that, guys. That being said, I'm jumping off, and have a good night's rest. Stay wise, stay woke, stay warm, stay aware. Take care of yourselves. Take time to appreciate your creator, the universe, whatever God you believe in. If you believe in nothing, then may nothing have nothing on you for nothing. <laughs> but if you do, then may you be protected in all your forms, all of your walks of life, and may no enemy against you prosper. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bad wolf's out. I gotta I gotta go back to the wolf den and power down. Have a good night, guys. Appreciate you. Bye. Don't forget to check out blacksite32.com. All the good stuff is there. Lots of updates. With that, I'm out.